captain's log. Guybrush Threepwood. Lost at sea for days now. I have no crew or navigational instruments. No provisions except a half-eaten corn dog, and unless I find water soon, I'm surely done for. Only the hope of finding my love, Elaine, keeps me going. And my quest for the fabulous treasure called Big Whoop has left me in this sorry state. I thought it would bring me fame and glory. Instead, it delivered me into the clutches of my enemy, the zombie pirate LeChuck. I thwarted his evil plot to marry Elaine, and he was after revenge. Uh, really, really thirsty now. If only I could have a small drink of fresh water, I might have the strength to sail on. Oh, but I know there's nothing but ocean for miles and miles. If I could reach land, I might find water and some food. Fruit, maybe. Something to fight off the scurvy and help me get my strength back. Hmm, maybe some bananas. Oh, why do I torture myself like this? I might as well wish for some chicken and a big mug of grog for all the good it'll do me. Oh, my sweet Elaine. Am I cursed to starve here on this ocean without seeing your face just one more time? Am I... Chuck, I just don't feel that way about you. Elaine? By my congealed blood, you'll learn to love me. Sail with me, and I'll make you queen of the dead. I, I can't. I'm washing my hair tonight. Blast me your hair, woman! Can't you see that this salty old sea corpse pines for your every gentle caress? You know, I don't think my father would approve of me dating the undead. And you're probably too nice a zombie pirate for me anyway. Let's just be friends instead. Chuck, you're an evil, foul-smelling, vile, codependent villain, and that's just not what I'm looking for in a romantic relationship right now. Darn your riddles, you saucy female! What do you mean? Ah! Oh! 
You're a bloodthirsty monster who's already kidnapped me once, tortured my friends, and taken from me the only man I ever loved. Guybrush Threepwood. <sighs> ah, how romantic. Ship ahoy! Threepwood! Fish him out. Guybrush? Guybrush, Threepwood. By my gangrenous gut, I don't know how you escaped my carnival of the damned. But you won't escape a taste of my blade! <laughs> Lass has spirit. Throw him in the hole, and I'll finish him after the battle. Turn loose the long boots and prepare the flaming voodoo cannonball. get out of here and help Elaine. If I could only get through this one door, well then I could easily overpower the armed guards above, slip over the side, and make for the shore. Quit your mumbling, captive! Blast ye scurvy dogs! Well, that looks pretty sturdy. This'll make you rue the day! I couldn't force that door open with my bare hands. I've asked you, swabs, prepare for your doom! Stand your distance! I'm selling these fine leather jackets. Really? No. I'm lying. In that case, I don't want one! Well, sorry we couldn't make a deal. Cross me again, and I'll chum for sharks with you! You sound pretty tough. Oh, I'm so tough. In junior high, I stuffed Davy Jones in his locker. How tough are you again? Oh, I'm so tough, I could survive being flogged with a cat of nine tails for half an hour. Or three cats of five tails for 18 minutes. It's been uh, swell talking to you. see a diorama of the children of the world living in peace and freedom. No, wait. It can't be that. It's just too dark to make out what's in there. I don't have my lockpicking tools. If there are any of you stinking wretched fiends of the damned in there, could you open this door? It's not that I'm trying to escape or anything. It's just that I'd like to step outside and enjoy an adult beverage. You drink bilge water, and your mother's dress, you funny! Take that! Great. I can't reach it. There's nobody up there to hear me. Well, nobody friendly, anyway. Let's see if you can take this! Hey, it's one of those new self-loading cannons I've heard so much about. I'll reduce your fort to... I can't quite squeeze past this cannon. Move out of the way! I can't fire that cannon with you standing there! It's the muzzle of the cannon. It's another gun bay. Hey! Is anyone over there? I can't squeeze past this cannon to get over there. There's a strange glow coming from that porthole. Can anybody down there hear me? I guess not. Is there anyone down in the hold? I don't think anyone is there. I can't reach it. Looks like a ramrod. 
one for the cannon. I feel like I could take on the world! The cannon's already loaded. I can't reach it. You in the fort! Your doom be at hand! The grate is solid wood. I can't push it open. Somehow, I find all this violence desensitizing. I don't think I've ever seen a cuter pirate. Stand your distance! How tough are you again? I'm so tough I... Uh, um... I drink milk straight from the carton. Ooh. Well, I'm pretty tough myself. You? Don't make me laugh. You couldn't even grow a decent beard. Hey, how did you know about my attempted beard? Uh, pirate's intuition. I am so tough. You are not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Are so. Are not. Are so. Are not. Are so. Are not. Is that hook for real? Of course it's real. A vicious shark tore off me hand. Oh, what a struggle it was. I remember. It is so a fake. It is not. Well, okay, it is. See, I haven't lost my hand yet. This is sort of a training hook. I'm wearing this just to get used to the feel of it. Captain LeChuck says he'll cut my hand off when he gets some free time. I do have a hangnail. It'll probably get infected. Hey, wait a minute. You're not a pirate. Wally! Don't you recognize me? It's Guybrush Threepwood. Oh, gee. Hello, Mr. Wood. The last time I saw you, we were prisoners in LeChuck's dungeon. Why would you sign on with a ship of the living dead? Well, Mr. Brush, at first I had some misgivings about it. But thanks to LeChuck's seminars, motivational lectures, and audiobooks on Parrot, I've become a vicious corsair. You can too. Ask me how. Tell me about these seminars. The seminars really brought things into focus. You don't know how empowering it is to be able to say to yourself, yes, I am a despicable, filthy, villainous pirate deserving blame and censure, but that pirate is who I want to be. Everyone was really very supportive. We had this great feeling of synergy. Then LeChuck kicked down the door and said, you lazy scum, get back to work or I'll beat you with your own legs. Tell me about these motivational lectures. Well, they weren't lectures as such. It was what LeChuck described as flogging the inner child. Tell me about these audiobooks. To become a pirate, the audiobooks on Parrot are the key. You get a set of 12 parrots, one a month. Return as many as you like, keep them all and live. They teach you to talk just like a pirate. All the key phrases are in there. Blow the man down, shiver me timbers. Who's a pretty bird? All the phrases a pirate needs to command respect on the high seas. I'm not in the mood for sales hype. Here. At least take this literature. You may change your mind. Set me free, Wally. I can't, Mr. Brush. I'm the evil pirate blood nose now. And besides, even if you got up on deck, LeChuck would cut you to ribbons. What are LeChuck's plans? He's been working on a secret weapon some incredibly powerful cannonball. He's going to use it to blow down the walls of the fort so his crew can overrun the island. What's behind that door? Ooh! That's the door to LeChuck's treasure hold. 
There's heaps and piles of gold and silver. He's brought all the loot he's ever stolen to give to Elaine. LeChuck is convinced that he can buy Elaine's love. Hmm. It's been uh, swell talking to you. Hey! If there are any of you rancid, evil, deviant hellspawn behind this door, you better watch out, because I'm breaking out of here. That's too big to fit in the keyhole. Touch that cannon! Stay away! Snap out of it, Wally! That's blood nose to you, you scurvy sea bass! You're a failure as a pirate. Shut your trap, you yellow bellied blowfish! One more peep out of you, and I'll do you in! Peep. Yes, scabrous swab. One more word and I'll let you have it. Word. That's it. I'm gonna blast you. I'm gonna... I'm... gonna... <laughs> oh, I can't do it. I just can't. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Wood. I'm just not a pirate. I'm not ferocious or bloodthirsty or hateful or anything. I'm not even... I'm not even unpleasant. Oh. Ah! Oh, there, there. It's Wally's fake pirate hook. <laughs> Scraping a hook on that would be pointless. I never have been any good at lockpicking, but I am still a mighty pirate, believe you me. <laughs> the hook is too big to fit through the grate. <laughs> Wally doesn't need this hook anymore. I don't want to disturb him. He's had a hard day. <laughs> hey, it's one of those new self-loading cannons I've heard so much about. Pretty good at this. Ooh, gross. All the bones and stuff are floating towards the ship. Ah! <laughs> well, things messed with the wrong skull this time. <laughs> There's a skeletal arm floating in the water. If I could just get my hands on that gunner. If I could just get my hands here. It's a horrible skull. Ah, well, I guess I'll just have to look on the bright side of this. That will reach it, but it can't catch hold. At least I've lost some weight. Lose something? I am Murray, the invincible demonic skull! Wake in fear, mortal. For your insolence, I shall now devour you. Uh-huh. Could you 
Uh, 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 could you pick me up so I can bite you? No. I just thought I'd ask. You're about as fearsome as a doorstop. Is it a really evil-looking doorstop? Uh, never mind. You know, you'd look great with a melting candle on your forehead. I get the feeling you're not taking me very seriously. No, I am, really. Really? Then let me hear you scream in terror. Ah. <laughs> At least now you never have to worry about what to wear. Well, I suppose that's true. And accessorizing is really easy. That's also true. And I look good in hats. There you go. I'm going now. Good. Now leave me alone. I have a lot of scheming and evil plotting to do. <laughs> Boy, there's not much to do out here when you're just a bodiless head. The hook won't reach. Well, I could pass the time by whistling it bad lips. It's a ramrod with a plastic hook stuck on the end. This is so unfair. Hey, that's my arm. Give that back. Now everybody's going to storm the fort, and I'm going to be stuck here. If I gave you your arm back, what would you do with it? I'd terrorize the South Seas. I'd torture the living. I'd demolish the... Uh, what I meant to say was I'd use it to pet kittens. <laughs> nope. You blew it. Without eyeballs. How can you walk around without a brain? Some things no one can answer. Was your mother's father bald too? I'm not bald. I just have a really high widow's peak. I'm going now. Good. Heavy to carry. It's a sharp cutlass. I don't want to use this cutlass for no reason. That's a little large to pick my teeth with. Hello? Is there anybody in there who's not evil or dead? It's the restraining rope for the cannon. <laughs> I could never untie that big enough. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Taste cold steel, feeble cannon restraint rope. <laughs> The rope has been cut. There's nothing restraining the cannon now. <laughs> now, with the demon flames of this voodoo cannonball, I'll blast my significant other into the significant other world. <laughs> That'll show her how much I truly care. <laughs> <laughs> Neptune's navel, that was a close one. I lost my cutlass when the ship capsized. No 
Oh, if only I could find a way to get up there and get out. Hey, can anybody lower a rope? Hey, I can see the ocean floor. And there's a really angry looking skull floating around out there. That's not the kind that opens. Because the ship is capsized, this ladder goes to nowhere. It's the biggest pile of treasure I've ever seen. I finally found my treasure. I'm a real pirate after all. Oh, look at all this. And it's mine, all mine. Gold and jewels. I'm rich. And still, I would give it all up for the love of Elaine. I think I'll invest this in grog and tech sheltered annuities. I hate to think what that comb's been through. I think LeChuck needs it more than I do. I don't even want to know what LeChuck's plans were for that. No self-respecting pirate would be seen wearing that. It's got a zombie ballerina. It's LeChuck and all his gory. Uh, glory. Marry me or die. Touching. Chocolate-covered barnacles? Marshmallow hooks? Sea urchins? Glass eyes? Ugh. Yeah, that stuff is disgusting, even for a pirate. It's stabbed through the heart. Cute and yet sinister. It's a bottle of sparkling formaldehyde. Good year, too. Hey, it's the Songs for Undead Lovers collection. Now, my hi fi is broken, and it's impossible to find a quadraphonic needle anywhere in the Caribbean. It's a bag of wooden nickels. Some treasure. Hey, there's a big diamond ring behind this bag. Elaine? Um, did you really mean what you said out there? That I was the only man you ever loved? Uh, well, yes, Guy Brush, I guess I did. Elaine, I'm a man of action. A swashbuckler, a rogue, a wanderer, a man who can hold his breath for ten minutes. I have no ties and no regrets. I sail with the wind and go where adventure takes me. But somehow something always Guy Brush, me. stop babbling. Elaine? Will you marry me? Oh, Guybrush. Oh, Wally? You're alive! But how did you survive the explosion? I was thrown clear. I'm just lucky I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. Wow, Elaine, that's some ring. Thank you, Wally. It's an engagement ring from Guybrush. Hey, that looks just like the big diamond ring that Chuck had in his treasure hold. You know, the one with that ghastly, disfiguring voodoo curse on it? Well, I'm sure Guybrush wouldn't have given you that ring. Anyway, i got to be going. I hear there's a tattoo removal place on this island that's freckle safe. See you at the wedding. Guybrush! Uh... <laughs> Oh no! Elaine? She's not gonna be happy about this. <laughs> Elaine? Honey? You okay? Can I get you anything? 
I'll just start lifting that pirate curse then, huh? She must weigh a ton. Uh, no offense. Hey, I wonder how many carrots she... No, no, bad idea. The bridge is uncrossable. It's just as well. There's nothing interesting in the fort anyway. It's an informative plaque put up by the Plunder Island Naturalist Society. Plunder Island Feral Chicken. One of Plunder Island's most common fauna and the animal for which our capital of Puerto Pollo is named. Hi. Yo. I don't think so. Mysterious. We're closed. You've, you've got to help. I closed? Yep. The child labor laws around here are very strict. But, but, but my girlfriend has been placed under a pirate curse. Oh. Then you need to see the lady over in Plunder Swamp. She's been leaving flyers around. You might find one somewhere here in town. Feeling down because your chicks turned to gold? Come to the swamp, get your fortune told. Voodoo and things. Formerly just voodoo. Visit our new location on Plunder Island. Blonde Beard's Chicken Shop. They're closed. Open up! Open up, I need chicken! It's locked. later. Uh, but you don't understand. I need help. It's an emergency. A hair emergency? No. My, my girlfriend... It, well, no, actually, I suppose she's my fiancé now. Although I guess she never really said yes. Because the curse kind of stopped her in mid-sentence. Uh, curse? Did you say curse? You'll want to see the voodoo lady. She handles curses. Excuse me, could you... We're closed. We don't do curses. Beat it! Looks like it was thrown here by a typhoon. Boo! Ah! <laughs> oh, it's just you again. Just your most terrifying image of evil revisited. Yeah, right. I bring you warning from the infernal realms. Do not go farther into the swamp. Turn back. Turn back. Darkness will envelop you. <laughs> what are you doing up there? I am standing as a testament. Standing? Hanging as a testament to the power of the forces of evil that will one day claim victory over the entire Earth. How long are you going to keep doing that? As long as it takes. Must get pretty dull up there, I suppose. Never! The powers of darkness are never dull. We will one day prove that... Oh, who am I trying to fool? I'm bored out of my skull. Figuratively speaking, of course. How'd you get all the way up there? Through sheer force of will. Uh-huh. 
All right, it was a bunch of those weird voodoo kids. They found me on shore and put me on top of this spike all the time, thinking they were so funny. Do you need me to help you down? Help! I need no help from you foolish mortals! I am Murray, the all-powerful demonic skull! Okay, just thought I'd ask. Don't get me wrong, I do appreciate the offer. Do you know anything about lifting curses? Oh right, I know a lot about lifting curses. That's why I'm a disembodied talking skull, sitting on top of a spike in the middle of a swamp! You seem bitter. I'm sorry, it's been a rough day. You seem restless. Oh, I don't know. It's just that not many people come through this swamp. What would you rather be doing? I need to be out among the lesser people, terrifying them and causing pain and misery. That would make you happy? Yes, happy in a dark demonic way. I'd love to stay and chat, but uh, I gotta go. Hey, Murray, remember this? I'd still appreciate it if I could have that back. What would you do with it without your collarbone? Oh, never mind. It's a bottle of paste. How cute. A paper voodoo doll. I don't need it. It's just a toy. It's a voodoo pen. What a relief. It's a big stuffed alligator with an unusually long tongue. It's the alligator's tongue, and it's still moist. Who are you, and how did you just appear like that? I am one gifted with a second sight, adept at manipulating the forces of nature for the benefit of all who enter my door. You're a fashion consultant. Well, yes, but that's not what I was referring to. I am a voodoo priestess. Neat. You're an autumn, by the way. Don't I know you from somewhere? We have known each other for a very long time, Guybrush Threepwood. You've been through much, so it is understandable that you have forgotten me. We met on Melee Island when you were first trying to become a pirate. Hang on a second. Are we gonna do one of those flashback things? They always make me nauseous. No, I'll make this quick. I twice helped you defeat the evil pirate LeChuck, first by preparing the voodoo antidote. I'm starting to remember. And then again by helping you prepare a voodoo doll of his zombie form. That's right. You've helped so much, and I still don't know your name. I am known by many names on many different islands. But names have little importance. You should know this more than anyone, Guybrush Threepwood. Yes, you're right. Hey, are you making fun of me? I wouldn't dream of it. Nice place. I love what you've done with it. Thank you. You'll have to excuse the mess. The kids came over to play with their paper voodoo dolls. They're adorable children. Would you like to see some pictures? Perhaps later. Yes, there's no time for that now. I sense that something terrible has happened. Hey, you're good. Something terrible has happened. I finally proposed to Elaine. Congratulations. That doesn't sound so ter- And when I placed the engagement ring on her hand, she was placed under a horrible pirate curse and trapped for eternity as a solid gold statue. Oh, that explains it. I was struck with a wave of overwhelming hatred and anger. Yeah, that LeChuck was a pretty mean guy. I was talking about Elaine. No, there's no time to worry about that now. We have to hurry. 
Do not panic, Guybrush. She will be safe until we can break the curse. You only have to worry about her being stolen. Where did you hide her? I can't tell you. It's too secret. Very well. But I am very much relieved to hear that she is safe and... Uh, I just remembered something I've got to do. Uh, see you around. You didn't hide her. Go, Guybrush, hurry, before you're too late. <laughs> Elaine! I've got to get her back. This is so embarrassing. Looks like I'm gonna need some more help. Someone's stolen Elaine. That is unfortunate. It will be difficult to get her back. Do you know who kidnapped her? Not for certain, but I suspect that it's the mangy pirates anchored in Danger Cove. Can you give me something to lift the curse? No, LeChuck's curse is a very powerful one. Fueled by his anger and his intense frustration in dealing with the opposite sex. I have nothing here to lift so powerful a curse, but there is one way. Great, tell me. You have to replace the cursed ring with a pure one of greater or equal value. A good guideline is two months' salary. I had no idea this curse stuff was so complicated. That's nothing. Just be glad she wasn't turned into a magic swan. What would I have to do then? You don't want to know, believe me. Isn't there a more budget-conscious way to lift this curse? You should be able to do it with virtually no out-of-pocket expense. Perfect. How? Legends speak of a whopping big diamond ring on Blood Island. Blood Island? I've never heard of it. You will soon become quite familiar with it. But you must be careful, Guybrush. I have foreseen that your journey will be filled with peril and deception. I have also seen that Blood Island will be the place where you will die. Uh-huh. So, uh, any huge uncursed rings on any other islands? No. The value of the ring on Blood Island comes from its emotional significance. It represents a pure, true love, a power greater than any other. Oh, that's sweet. I... I think I have something in my eye. Do not mock the voodoo priestess. How do I get to Blood Island? You will need three things. A map to Blood Island, for the journey is a long and dangerous one. A seaworthy ship to take you there. And an experienced crew. Map, ship, and crew. Got it. Well, how will I find the ring on Blood Island? All I can say is that I see a long and painful history connected with that ring. And I feel a great sadness associated with it. You will learn more once you have actually found the island. Blood Island sounds dangerous. You have to come with me. No, I cannot. I have lived on three different islands in the past six years. I do not wish to travel anymore. Besides, this derelict is still an escrow. But who will be the game's only female character? You've got to come. You're my only hope. No, Guybrush. There is another. Blood Island, here I come. I finally defeated LeChuck and his skeleton pirates. True evil can never be destroyed completely. But I heard him blow up and everything. You'd be surprised at how much abuse an evil undead zombie pirate can take. Well, how can I finally destroy him for good? No one knows. His power seems to grow with every incarnation. You may have dealt with him for now. But this respite can only be temporary at best. 
I'm sick of talking about that jerk LeChuck. What island is this, anyway? You have landed on Plunder Island. Plunder Island. Sounds appropriately piratey. Naturally. It's a sort of retirement community for ex-pirates and their spouses. Hmm, sounds exciting. Lately, there has been all too much excitement on the island. All centering around Governor Marley, the Chuck, and a giant chicken. Elaine is governor of this island, too? Actually, Elaine is the governor of the entire Tri-Island area, comprised of Melee, Booty, and Plunder Islands. She moved to her fort here on Plunder after the kitchen and landscaping staff quit her Booty Island mansion. What about this giant chicken business? Ah, yes, Skybrush. You have landed on an island gripped by the cold, clammy hand of fear. Don't you think you're being a bit overdramatic? This was a peaceful island until the great beast landed on our shores. Some say it was sent to make the islanders pay for their cruelty. Others claim it was simply blind fate. Whatever the impetus, it came. What? What? I'm not even at the scary part yet. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It was El Pollo Diablo, the giant demon chicken. Tall as a man and twice as powerful, his massive drumsticks propel him through the dark jungle with ease. No one has seen the beast, but on the eve of the full moon, his blood-curdling squawk can be heard from every corner of this wretched island. In the dark of night, he roosts patiently, watching, waiting for the one day. No, 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 wait. Don't tell me. Let me guess. He's establishing a new pecking order. He roams the island, exacting terrible vengeance on those who would capture and eat his smaller brethren. Oh, give me a break. There were once others like you, skeptical to the true nature of the beast. But they're all dead now, pecked into a bloody pulp by his savage beak. But I'm sure you have nothing to worry about. Yeah, right, whatever. How did you end up on Plunder Island? I realized that my location in the swamp on Scab Island wasn't ideally situated. So you moved to a swamp on a different island? I just said I could see the future. I never claimed to be an expert in real estate. Thanks. I've heard all I needed to know. I want to know what voodoo spell you're working on. Voodoo spell? Oh, this. This is just a fondue I'm making for tonight. Would you like to try it? Does it have any skink toes in it? A few. I'll pass. I want to know more about safe hair replacement systems. I can imagine. Didn't you have a beard the last time I saw you? I sure did. A really cool one. I wonder what happened to it. I want to know more about a diet I can live with. I'll share with you knowledge passed from mother to daughter in my family for generations. What's that? Low fat, high fiber. It works. I want to know more about variable rate mortgages. Bad idea. Though attractive to the first time homeowner, the rate reacts wildly to fluctuations in the market and can work against the buyer over time. You're best off starting with a 20% down payment and a variable rate mortgage, then refinancing at a fixed rate after one or two years as the market warrants. Could you repeat that? No. Thanks for your help. Gotta go. It's a bottle of paste. I'm not that hungry.
I don't want those dull little scissors. Admiral Sweetums bit o jerky bubblegum. Five cents. I have to get the gum out of the machine first. I'm no vandal. I'm a pirate. Wow, I got a whole pack of gum. like sirloin. I think he wants to be alone right now. It's my pal from LeChuck's ship. I can't use the skeleton arm with that. Hey, Murray. Stop tormenting me. Mm. I don't know if I want to carry him around. He's kind of annoying. Those pirates in Danger Cove walk on their hands. Weird. Tastes like sand. That's my first clue. Untitled composition in gold and diamond. This newest addition to our public works of art was shamefully taken without authorization. The Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts presents Spear. It looks dangerous. Ahoy! That fort has seen better days. It's a glowing ember left over from the battle. Ouch! It says, Welcome to Puerto Pollo from the Plunder Island Poultry Brotherhood. How inspiring. A budding young entrepreneur. Lemonade. Five cents. Hello there, Sonny. You open yet? Oh boy, oh boy. My first customer. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell. Hi, my name's Kenny. Kenny Foulmouth. It sure would be neat if you would buy some of my lemonade. It only costs a nickel. And best of all, I have a bottomless mug policy. Well, that does sound like a good deal. Is the lemonade good? Oh, gosh, yes. It's a very helpful drink. Even better for you than placing leeches on your tongue. Wow. What's the lemonade good for? It's a dandy tonic for scurvy. It'll cure all your symptoms, including, but not limited to, Gradual weakening, aching muscles, sunken eyes, painful gums, ashen skin, loss of teeth, internal bleeding, the reopening of old wounds, diarrhea, kidney failure, fainting, halitosis, and death. Will it cure evil pirate curses? No, but it has a refreshing citrus flavor with no unpleasant aftertaste. What's the lemonade good for? Drinking. Oh. I'd like to buy some lemonade. Sure. We have a bottomless mug policy, you know. 
That'll be a nickel. Hey, there's no bottom to this mug. Give me my money back. I'm sorry. I did tell you about our bottomless mug policy, and there are no refunds. Why, you little. Thank you. Come again. I want my money back. Why? Was the lemonade bad? I don't know. I didn't drink any. Well, if you're not dissatisfied with our product, I can't justify giving you a refund. I'm sorry, but it's company policy. But... Thank you. Have a nice day. Goodbye. How inspiring. A budding young entrepreneur. I'm bigger than him. I'm no bully. Are you gonna give me my money back? You know, I'd really like to, but... What is it they always say? Ah, yes. The customer is always a slave to the pitiless multinational corporations whose products they live to consume. So... No! Can I get you anything else? Yeah, goodbye, you little brigand. Bye, mister. The Surgeon General of Plunder Island has determined that ingredients in this product may be harmful or fatal if swallowed. It's a great big vat full of red dye. Number two. I think that's a carcinogen. That would stain my fingers red. Danger Cove. Danger, do not enter. Plunder Island Naturalist Society Nature Trail. Bush. A pristine example of one of the many decorative bushes used for landscaping Plunder Island. Beware. Ipecac, Cephalus ipecacuana, one of the creeping vines common throughout Plunder Island. The syrup made from the ipecac flowers was used by the early settlers of Plunder Island as a purgative. It's an ipecac flower. It's rooted in with the vine. I can't just pick it up. Wow. This jungle is thick. I'll need something sharp if I'm gonna hack my way through there. I can't carry it all. I need to cut through it. I could try to eat my way through, but that could take hours. Blonde Beard's Chicken Shop. It's the two-way speaker for the walkthrough. Uh, hello? I can't understand you. What was that? Eh, yeah, forget it. It's a chicken coop, but I don't see any chickens. It's an old crow's nest, converted into a sign for the chicken shop. Do you have a reservation? Uh, no. No reservation slip, huh? Then out you go! Do you have a reservation? Of course I have a reservation. Then let's see your reservation slip. No reservation slip, huh? Gotta make way for paying customers. Good morning. At the tone, Caribbean standard time will be two, 16, and 50. Four seconds. Beep. The Barbary Coast. Welcome, patron, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Aye, and if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? 
We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great. Maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never heard of it. It's a funny story, really. I need it to lift this curse that's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second, did I just share too much? He seems irritable. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood. I see, and I don't care. I'm a mighty pirate. Ha! What do you mean, ha? I mean just what I say. Ha! If you're a mighty pirate, then I'm bold. I'm mighty enough to defeat LeChuck twice. LeChuck? Ha! Even if he's dead, there's just no excuse for that hair. So you're a ship captain, huh? Not just any ship captain. Don't tell me you've never heard of Captain Rene Rottingham. I've never heard of Captain Rottingham. I'm only the most cunning and well-groomed captain ever to say of the Caribbean. Well, how'd you like to join my crew? Me serve on your crew? Please don't make me break into hysterical laughter while this buffoon is working on my hair. Why don't you want to join my crew? I serve under no man. Oh, boy. Now, just one second. If there's any treasure to be found, I'm going to be the man to find it. And I'll look absolutely stunning while I'm doing it. Well, I didn't want you on my crew anyway. That's your loss. And boy, lose the ponytail. It's so last year. Did you know you're starting to go gray? I most certainly am not. Uh, don't get me wrong, gray hair suits you. It doesn't... I mean, of course it would, but uh, I don't have to worry about that for several years. If I were you, I'd worry more about those split ends. Split ends? I'll have you know I've killed men for comments less slanderous than that. You seem busy. I'll come back later. He looks like a true professional. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pi- Quiet. Red, huh? Don't distract him while he's working on me. Aye, laddie, you'll have to wait your turn. It's the pirate way. Wow, I bet those could cut through anything. I can't reach them. It's a comb, probably made from the jawbone of some near-extinct sea mammal. It's a bunch of combs floating in that blue stuff. I'm tempted, but I'd better not. Hands off those combs. Those are ours. Ah, hands off that comb, or I'll have your bangs, you thieving dog. Coiffures for the Discerning Pirate, Spring Edition. I'll wait for the movie. It's a rock, and it's a paperweight. Don't touch that, you foul creature! Or this aid may ruin my haircut. That comb looks like it's made from a jawbone. And this gum is the kind that won't stick to dental work. There's a plaque on this portrait. It says, Captain Richard Squawkins. There never was a more despicable knave, but we gave him an impeccable body wave. Captain Charles Vane. The captain stood seven feet high in his boots, but you'd never have guessed that we dyed his roots. Another satisfied customer.
It's a dapper pirate. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. Of course you are. Okay then, who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the. That's right, mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Edward Snugglecakes Van Helgen. Dude. I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on, I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, we realized something was horribly wrong. Is this gonna be scary? Because I warn you, I'm easily startled and will scream like a baby. Steal yourself, young pirate. We were all stricken with a melody. A diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 Hey, that's kind of catchy. Aye, all too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the Obsessivo Compulsivo will haunt me forever. You went from pirating to hairstyling. Why? The music of the sea is something that takes hold of your soul and never lets go. But the life of a sailor is a rough one, and the sea shows no mercy. It was no easy choice to leave, but I realized that I could still enjoy the music of the sea while remaining safely on land. Through affordably priced sea shanty compilation albums? Uh, no. By starting a barbershop quartet, obviously. Obviously, but there are only three of you. Auditions didn't go as well as we'd hoped. We once had a tenor named Dominique, but he left. Artistic differences. <laughs> I could be the fourth in your barbershop quartet. Uh, no, no, uh, that's okay. I was wrong. We don't need one after all. Oh, come on, I've really got away with a ballad. All right, then. Let's hear what you've got. Monkey in my pocket and he's stealing all my change. His stare is blank and glassy. I suspect that he's deranged. Oh, my dear, sweet, merciful savior in heaven. Pretty good, huh? You must take an oath now, before man and God, that you will never, ever again sing in public. So what are you telling me exactly? Are you truly happy with this line of work? I may return to the sea one day, but for now I'm happy helping pirates look their very best. At least until we find a fourth for our barbershop quartet. How would you like to join my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's gonna be a blast. We're going to Blood Island. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. I am a gentleman, you big old bedwetting duty head. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. All right, let's get to dueling. No, no, no. There are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Okay. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. That's an old one. Come back when you have some fresher material, eh? Nice cologne you're wearing. Did you actually roll around in dung or just dab a little behind each ear? That's not the type of insult I had in mind. Hey, that's a nice shirt. How long have you been colorblind? Oh, please. Did I mention you're a big old bedwetting duty head? As a matter of fact, you did. And I'm not impressed. I don't want to insult you. Why can't we just get along? Whoa, look at the time. Gotta scoot. It's a salty pirate, sucking on some candy. Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. 
So... So, it's good to meet you, Mr... Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name? Bill? Cutthroat Bill. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? Say, uh, what you eating there? Jawbreaker. Is it good? Yep. You don't say much, do you? Nope. That's a really good jawbreaker there, huh? Yep. Well, that's just terrific, isn't it? Yep. How'd you break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Well, just that, you know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just a lot of fun. It's like a party every day. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy and the laughter bubbles out of me like a sparkling fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. Pirate stories, got any? Okay, here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. He had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Don't you mean sixth sense? No. By some cruel trick of nature, he was born without taste buds. But his other senses took over and gave him an uncanny ability to find treasure. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. After we tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. Did you ever find any treasure? We sailed for two years, and had finally started back to Plunder Island. But just as we started to doubt him, he paid off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. Wait a second. Was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? I just had a feeling. Are you ever going back to pirating? Maybe. Someday. If I find the right captain. Perfect. I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You a captain? Hardly. I discovered the treasure of Big Whoop. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure? Immense mounds of gold and diamonds? Solid gold scepters of power? Anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden? Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. I bet I could too, you big old bedwetting duty head. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. Boy, I sure could go for a jawbreaker right about now. Yep. I said I sure could go for a jawbreaker right about now. I hope you find one. It's been a pleasure. Bye. In memory of the chickens who gave their lives during the great Puerto Pollo potluck jamboree of 1621. The front door is closed. It's locked. I don't want to disturb anyone in there. The Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts presents Spear. Looks like a nice coat. 
with just a few flakes of unsightly dandruff. That's weird. I didn't think dandruff moved. Oh. They're, um, wiggling. So, which one of you is the head laughs? It looks like there's something inside the pocket of this coat. There's a glove in here. It's an old travel trunk. It's covered with stickers from many faraway places. Hey! It's a sticker from Blood Island. It says, Blood Island is for bleeders. A message from the Blood Island Tourism Council. I mean, maybe the performer who owns this trunk knows how to get to Blood Island. It looks too heavy for me to carry. It's stuck to the trunk. There's some fake spears. I don't need a prop. Hmm. It's a fake sword. It's very mod. No, I like the natural look. It's some goofy drama masks. It's a donkey mask. I don't want to look like a jackass. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're thinking. So knock it off. I wonder if there's a part in this play for a dashing rogue pirate. Hi. To swab or not to swab? No, no, that's not right. We had better looking trees in my fifth grade school play. Come on, Slappy, you've got to get this right. The show opens today. Prop tree. Fake trees of this genus were often used by early settlers for theatrical productions. Then I kill Caesar, follow that up with a little soft shoe. It's an actor. Thespian? I don't remember. Is the water ballet before or after my mad scene? Yo. Have you been to Blood Island? But of course. Blood Island was once the place to be if you were an artist in the Caribbean. Those were the days. We were young and wild, pushing the limits of our craft. Oh, what risky, daring performances we gave. We weren't afraid to shock or offend the stodgy, mainstream sensibilities of our audiences. Oh, what did you perform? Dinner theater, mostly. Could you tell me how I can find Blood Island? My agent, Palado Domingo, always handled the travel arrangements. He would know how to get there. Any idea where I could find him? He's a member of the Brimstone Beach Club here on Plunder Island. You might catch him there. I'm a dangerous pirate. Who are you? Cromwell. Slappy Cromwell. It's not my real name, actually. My agent told me my given name just didn't have star quality. What was your given name? Rex Fortune, Adventure Seeker. I see. What's that putrid, stench-ridden drivel that you're rehearsing? But this, this is the master work of the Bard. Do you really think it's that bad? Was the Great Pyramid of Cheops originally 481 feet high? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have altered the material. How could I have taken up my wretched pen and stabbed it bodkin-like through the unsullied poetry of the master? You rewrote Shakespeare? I was compelled to. Not a single person was coming to any of my performances. Oh, these stupid, brutish pirates! Not men enough to confront their own sensitive inner natures. So I rewrote the whole folio, contracted the brilliance of decades into a 45-minute review. Spear! A theatrical medley. Why can't you go back to the original scripts? 
Oh, the sweet, sweet, bitter irony of it all. Now that you have confirmed that I have produced a work of unredeemable trash, I'm more or less guaranteed to have a financial success on my hands. Why do I find that strangely encouraging? Can I watch you rehearse your horrible play? I'd rather you didn't. I get nervous when people watch. Of course. Can I join your show? Good heavens, no. I could hear your awful singing in the barbershop from way over here. Acting is my life. Let me join your show. Good heavens, no. And stop whining. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. You might see the surprise ending to Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet die. Actually, that ending didn't set well with the focus groups. Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. Then you'll hear all the answers to my knock-knock jokes. Carry on. A pirate by any other name would still reek. Arr. Next, I burn... It's Juliet's balcony. I guess they changed the end of Romeo and Juliet. And then I smash the watermelon. Wherefore would I put it? What fools these men with morals be? So how'd you get roped into doing this show? I'm a spokesmodel, actually. But what I really want to do is act. People just don't take you seriously when you're a spokesmodel. How surprising. Yeah, isn't it? Break a peg leg. Thanks. Oh, I'm never going to get ready for this performance. It's Yorick's headstone from Hamlet. Oh, yeah. That whole lend me your ears bit. I can't use a paper mache headstone. I sure hope I can get someone to actually do it. No, thank you, sir. Chewing gum affects my diction. Act four, scene eight. Join me, Rosencrantz. I am your father. It's empty. Or is it? I don't want to disturb the mystic powers of the hat. It's a magic wand. Watch me make this disappear. It's a magic wand. The magic powers need to be focused on something else. Nothing up my sleeve? Presto! Hey, it worked. There's something inside. The A, M, C's of ventriloquism. It's an interesting read on its own, but I should try it out on somebody. And then I do some prop comedy. You're no actor. Get off the stage, ya bum. What? But I didn't. Just you be quiet and help me rehearse. I'll teach... They're, um, wiggling. They're, um, wiggling. I don't like the way these feel in my hand. Brimstone Beach Club. 
He's a member of the bustling Plunder Island workforce. Yes, may I help you? My name is Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pirate. Threepwood? You must be seersucker Skip Rackham's cousin. How are Muffy and the twins? Uh, who? Hey, it's a lovely afternoon for the beach today. Not too crowded yet. There's a crafts workshop on the south beach and a swapper size class at two and four. Water's warm and the waves aren't too high. Just watch out for the occasional undead corpse washing up on shore. Might want to keep the kids away from any rotting flesh. But otherwise, the siege early today shouldn't spoil your afternoon. Just between you and me, the undead are notoriously bad tippers. So it's just as well they didn't take over the island, eh? <laughs> Let me see your membership card and we'll fix you right up. You don't need to see my identification. I don't need to see your identification. I'm not the pirate you're looking for. You're not the pirate I'm looking for. I can go about my business. You can go about your business. Move along. Move along, move... Hey, wait a minute! Your mind games won't work on me, boy. No membership card, I see. Well, sir, you're at the Brimstone Beach Country Club in Smorgie, part of the Leisure Lovers Plan community for retired pirates. It's very exclusive. I'm afraid if you don't have a membership card, you cannot use any of the club's amenities. I don't want an amenity. I had to eat one of those while I was lost at sea, and it was terrible. Then let me also point out that without that membership card, you are not permitted on the beach, you cannot use any of our towels, and you can't have anything from the grill. Good day. It's full of dirty dishes. It's an ice bucket for a bottle of sparkling grog. I don't want to carry that around. It's cold. Eh, my tongue might stick. I'm not going to fall for that one again. Those towels are for members only. It's coconut cooking oil. May I please have some of your oil? That oil is solely for the use of the fry station technician. This guy is being a real wet blanket. Hi. Yes? Hand me a towel, young man. Those towels are for club members only. How about a towel? I know the secret handshake. Ever since Thurston the Hook Eddington joined last year, the whole secret handshake thing just got kind of messy. We don't have one anymore. But of course, all members know that. I was thinking of joining a club for snotty rich folks. Where do I sign? Well, it's not that easy. First, you'll have to get on our waiting list. That could take several months. Then there's the credit check, references, family history, the oral presentation, and the written test. Mostly dealing with Spanish treasure, pillaging and golfing in the greater Caribbean area. And then finally, our 14-step interviewing process. And then I'll be in your club? No, I'm afraid after that I'd have to blackball you. What if I just washed up a bit? Then could I join your club? It's nothing personal, but club policy states that I have to exclude anyone whose odor or presence might disgust or offend the other members. I'm sure you understand. It's me, Biff, from the polo team. My pony's about to give birth. Quick, boil some water and get me lots and lots of towels. Not buying it, Mr. Mangy Pirate. The only way you can have a towel is if you are a member of the club. Let me have some of that cooking oil. That oil is only for French frying. It stays right here. Hey, what a coincidence. I'm French. Toss that baby right over here. You don't sound French, and you don't look French. And you don't know how much you're getting on my nerves. Onion ring emergency. Give me all the oil you've got. Sorry. As long as I'm in charge here, you'll get no handouts. 
Gotta be going. It's the alligator's tongue, and it's still moist. Now that's just wrong. <laughs> Who did you say kidnapped Elaine? I suspect it was the work of the pirates anchored in Danger Cove. Who are these pirates? No one knows. But people speak of strange, almost inhuman screams coming from their ship late into the night. Creepy. And their captain is a cruel, savage beast. The fiercest pirate ever to sail the Caribbean. Where's Danger Cove? It is on the west side of the island. The way is extremely treacherous. Few men have seen Danger Cove and lived. Figures. This is gonna be complicated, isn't it? You have no idea. What's that? Oh, uh, I said, good luck. Well, they're gonna regret messing with my girlfriend. Danger Cove, huh? You might want to stay indoors. This could get messy. Tell me again how to lift this curse. You need to replace the cursed ring with a pure one on Blood Island. And to get to Blood Island, you need a map, a ship, and a crew. Map, ship, and crew. Got it. About the chuck. Yes. What makes you think LeChuck will be back? Some men can search their entire lives and never discover their reason for being. LeChuck has found his. To perpetually rise from the dead and torment you and Elaine. It's what he does best. Gee, when you put it that way, it's kind of hard to stay mad at him. When I finally found Big Whoop and was enormously disappointed. Big Whoop is pure evil. You were lucky to escape alive. I can't remember much about it. Just that I was expecting so much more and felt so let down. Yes, it is the source of much of LeChuck's power. I'm never going back there again. I have foreseen otherwise. You will return to Big Whoop and confront LeChuck once again. I want to know more about a career in TV and VCR repair. So you want to make more money? Sure, we all do. Stick to pirating. And I want to know more about the Aztec god, Quetzalcoatl. Really sweet guy, not at all as bloodthirsty as they make him out to be. Shorter than you might think. Thanks for your help, gotta go. Punch him one, but that'd be rude. They give me that uh, Mexican L as look, please. Your wish is my command. No, stop! <laughs> Run for your life! 
I'm sure the authorities probably have the situation under control. But just in case, Baba, more moisturizer. Rabbit dogs are on the loose. Get out, now! I don't hear anything. There are no rabbit dogs on the loose. That's just what they want you to think. There's an axe-wielding maniac at the door! Flee! Perhaps you should offer yourself as a sacrifice so the rest of us may be saved. You've got a bald spot starting here in the back. Bald? You're lying, of course. If you say so. All I know is that there's definitely some kind of shine going on back here. You seem irritable. Is it from your dry scalp? My scalp is lovingly massaged with the finest creams and oils in the world, twice daily. Yeah, that's a little more than I wanted to know. Your petty jobs and insults mean nothing to me. You seem busy. I'll come back later. I think he'd notice. Keep your grubby meat off the paperweight! It's the handle the barber uses to raise and lower the chair. Ah! Don't you be touching that, that handle, you hair lubber! Station. You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin. The scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. That's a lie. Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. This calls for drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Rash? That's a bad sign. There's no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No, no, you'll ruin my hair! <laughs> Ahoy there, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton, of the Clan McMutton. Haggis. That's an unusual name. I suppose it is. But Haggis is just a nickname. The given name is heart, liver and kidneys boiled in the stomach of the animal McMutton. Oh, so your parents were expecting a girl. Aye. How did you become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema, the fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. So how did that help you become a barber pirate? That was a clipper ship. Ah. So you started this salon? Aye, but not on my own. I grew to love hairstyling so much that I told two of my best friends about it. And then they told two friends. Aye, and they told two friends, and so on and so on. Do you know any rousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. We were a crew of two score men, under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard a tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. We set sail and landed on the island within a fortnight and found the treasure the next morning. How big a treasure are we talking about here? Immense. An inconceivable amount of gold, silver, jewels, and coupons for discounts at area restaurants. Oh, it was a beautiful sight. A tremendous chest made of solid gold. Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. He gathered his resolve, counted to three, filled his lungs, and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought a grimace to even the most steel-hearted crewmen. By nightfall, the lot of us were lying on the beach, writhing in pain. Why didn't you lift with your knees? 
That would have been the weak man's way out. The pirate Angus McFolkham had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. The weakling used a lever and took the chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. And my proud Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cursing himself for not being strong enough. How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush. But a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? By besting me in a time-honored test of strength. How about a test of who can hold his breath the longest? No, I'm talking about the traditional Highland display of strength and virility, the caber toss. Oh, but in school, I was always picked last for caber tossing. Maybe it's because you weren't familiar enough with the sport. You see, the caber is a large tree trunk. We go to the field of competition, and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. That's just about the stupidest sport I've ever heard of. And I watch cable television. Aye, uh, but you cannot argue with tradition. Sounds great. Let's do it. I would never follow such a weak captain. You gonna finish that jawbreaker? Sure am. Okay, just checking. Do you really enjoy being a barber? It's a steady income. Do you know any more pirate stories? Want the story about how I slit the throat of the annoying little pirate who kept asking me questions? Is something troubling you? Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? You still haven't proven you can find anything of value. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. It's been a pleasure. Bye. I don't want that. I'm a vegetarian. Let me try out for your barbershop quartet again. No! Oh, please, please. The spirit of music is in me. All right, but this is the last time. For those cold dark shipboard nights, we've got boxers, briefs, and tights. Made from cotton, silk, or satin, in styles Anglo, Dutch, and Latin. When you sail, don't take a chance. Wearing nothing neath your pants. Trust, silver's long johns. They breathe. Great sainted jumping monkeys. What do you think, huh? That was even more atonal than last time. Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? I told you, not unless you give me sufficient insult and beat me in a duo. Whoa, look at the time. Gotta scoot. I've got nothing to say. Now there's a challenge to the field of honor. Choose your weapon. Cool. I choose this pistol. If I beat you, will you join my crew? The odds of you beating me are so astronomical, I will take that bet. <laughs> Again, I prove to you I'm the greatest duelist in the world. Wow. 
What is that blue stuff in the jar anyway? Ah, the old comb juice. Tis a fiery brew that's bested many a sailor with her fermented froth. It'll burn your throat unless you chase it with conditioner. I sure could use a haircut. Have a seat, laddie, and I'll do you up with a fine cloth. I'm afraid he might cut my ear off if I get up. Wow, I bet those could cut through anything. Those sure are nice scissors. Aye, they're my best pair. They can cut through almost anything. Why are they in the ceiling? Sometimes I cut hair so fast, the scissors fly from my hands at unbelievable speeds. Could I uh, borrow those scissors for a minute? Sorry, no. They're much too valuable to me. You know they can cut through almost anything. Yes, I believe you mentioned that. Never mind. I'm afraid he might cut my ear off if I get up. Ah, keep your hands off that chair handle. I can't reach it. I'm too low. that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. Wow, I bet those could cut through anything. the whole island, and I couldn't have find a single rock for a paperweight. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid, too. I can't get any farther until I clear away this undergrowth. I can't carry it all. I need to cut through it. sign means. Snake crossing? What possible harm could a snake? Well, this isn't good. I can't see it, but I'm sure it's a nine iron. 
I can't see what that is, but I bet it's a box of full of brand cereal. The highest fiber content available without a prescription. Last I heard, they added even more live white mouse flavor. I think it's a machete sharp enough to cut through even the largest reptiles. I bet that's a big old stick, the perfect snake beating size. I can't see it, but I bet it's Snake Away brand snake repellent. I think those are the jaws of life, which would really help me get out of this snake. Snake Crossing. It's the fearsome head of that pirate-eating snake. Yeah, I'd love to punch him one, but I don't want to make him angry. I doubt he's in any mood to listen. I bet that ship I saw belongs to the pirates who've stolen Elaine. You guys are gonna be in big trouble as soon as I get out of this snake. Massive man-eating snake. This fantastic reptile is one of Plunder Island's most dangerous and beautiful predators. That's not even gonna phase this guy. I don't wanna throw my voice there. It's a priceless, delicate Fabergé egg. It's a complete array of vacuum cleaner attachments. Hmm. No vacuum. The Plunder Island Yellow Pages. No phone. It's volume C and it's mostly digested. I can only make out page 243. A compass is a magnetized bit of metal floating in a solution. What a completely random piece of trivia. I hate to think what would happen if these fell into the wrong hands. These should only be used for good. He's wearing a little shirt that says, I whooped it up at Big Whoop. He's cuddly, but I really want out of this snake. I think I'm a little old for that. It's a reservation slip for Blondebeard's chicken. It's got a tread that just grips the road and won't let go. It's the remains of a member of the Plunder Island Naturalist Society. Those guys sure are dedicated. I doubt he has much to say. Eh, maple. It's a stack of big, fluffy pancakes. Ugh, thick, fatty sausage patties. Uh, no thanks. This is one pirate who's concerned about saturated fats. Two eggs over easy. It's a big, steaming cup of joe. I'm nervous enough just being inside this snake. That won't help me get out of this snake. He's already eaten. That won't help me get out of this snake. That won't help me get out of this snake. That doesn't need gum. Maybe later. It's an Ipecac flower. Well, I can't use the flower on its own. He's not going for the flower just by itself. I don't know how to mix the flower with that. I don't know how to mix the flower with that. It makes syrup of Ipecac. That seems logical. It's syrup of Ipecac. Same as the kind used in hospitals. I feel queasy enough just being inside this snake. <laughs> Whew. 
That sure was a close one. I thought for sure when I got eaten by that snake that I was done for. Thank goodness I'm safe. No? Hey! Hang on, the quicksand is sucking all the cool stuff I found in that snake from my pants. Now there's an odd sensation. I can't move anywhere in this quicksand. Of all the places for a quicksand pit. If I thrash around, I'll only sink faster. If I don't get out of here quick, I'm gonna be eating all the quicksand I could ever want. Quicksand pit. Quicksand pits of this type are common throughout Plunder Island's nature trails. Many an unwary traveler has found himself trapped and unable to escape. Uh-oh, someone, anyone, please, please help me, I'm sinking? As if the quicksand weren't bad enough. It looks dangerous. I've got nothing to say. If I could just reach that vine, I could pull myself free. I can't reach it. It's a branch resting precariously on that tree root. I can't move anywhere in this quicksand. The magic wand has no effect on that. My aim is always off when I'm under stress. I might miss. It's a bunch of conveniently placed hollow reeds. It's a hollow reed. I never could play the recorder. Give me some maracas though and watch me rock. The pin is too small, I might swallow it. Papa Pichu bush. Discovered by Plunder Island's indigenous peoples, this bush is named after a native word meaning youch. Ah, Papa Pichu. Well, I got the thorn. I hope that was worth it. It's a sharp thorn. Ah, Papa Pichu. Neat, a world-class pea shooter. It's just like the ones all the natives are using these days. I need to aim it at something. Shooting the vine won't do any good. Even if I could hit the branch with that, it wouldn't do any good. It's a rock, and it's a paperweight. This paperweight feels heavy. My aim is always off when I'm under stress. I might miss. If only I had some way of dropping the weight on the branch from directly above. They're very festive. They're fun, but I need to use them with something else. It's just floating there. I better not put it away just yet. I think I'm onto something here. <laughs> Perfect. For once today, things are going... Well, darn. Hey. Thank goodness for those unpredictable Caribbean trade winds. must be the pirates who've taken Elaine. Hey, you guys, come back here. It's the bay. 
I'll be cut to ribbons by those sharks if I go in there. It's a nice boat, except for that enormous gaping hole in the bottom. It makes the boat completely unseaworthy. I'd get a nasty splinter. I don't have enough gum to plug a hole that big. The demonic Jersey cow. Oh, Moose Ferratu, I am Murray. Free me, and I shall forever be your faithful netherworldly servant. Hey, <laughs> gotcha. You. Are you going to give me my money back? No! Can I get you anything else? Yeah, goodbye, you little brigand. Bye, mister! Hey, everybody! I'm a snot-nosed, devious little con man! Hey! It's a reservation slip for Blondebeard's chicken. Do you have a reservation? Of course I have a reservation. Then let's see your reservation slip. Very good. You may seat yourself, Mr. Uh, pardon me. Mrs. Brian Stoop. This is the greasiest, crustiest, most revolting chicken I've ever seen. Ah, yes. He got our black and Cajun style chicken. He's awfully reserved for a pirate. Uh, excuse me, sir. Now that's just rude. Excuse me, but... What a lucky pirate are ye! Me? You've struck gold, boy! I have? Gold, gold, gold! <laughs> gold and nuggets of chicken! Oh. A treasure trove of deep-fried fun! <laughs> now, what can kindly old Captain Blondebeard bring ye for lunch? I'll try the wishbone sandwich with sweet gherkins. We're out of that, I'm afraid. Actually, I'm out of just about everything. Not a drumstick left. All I have left are those biscuits and a few tubs of our special Ipecac slaw. How's the Ipecac slaw? Not bad. But 15 minutes later, you'd be hungry again. Business must be good if you're sold out of chicken. Sold out? I never said nothing about being sold out. Then what happened to all your chicken? Ah, tis a story steeped in terror, marinated in mayhem. There be a horror that prowls the jungles of Plunder Island. A seven-foot-tall monster he be, and he has a hatred for mankind unequaled. His preternatural rage burns hotter than the coals used to roast a million of his kin. He is El Pollo Diablo, the Devil Chicken! The 
devil chicken! The devil chicken. He hates me most of all. And his revenge against me must be tastier than me hearty giblets and cracklins party mix. What's he done? He turned loose all me chickens, returned them to the wild to roam the jungles free as nature intended. Even now, I have a huge order to fill and no chicken to fill it. But I know he's not through. Ruining me business is just the first step. Someday he'll return. For me! But mark this, I'll be ready for him. And a seven-foot chicken means me business will be thriving once more. Would you like to join my crew and sail the Blood Island? What? Leave me shop unguarded? Why, you treacherous tripe? You're lucky I don't take out me whisk and run you straight through. Whoa, whoa, calm down. I was just asking. Sorry. I'm as edgy as a beached whale in Nantucket. Just look at what fear that demonic fowl has done to me nerves. To whom are you going to deliver your chicken? There lies a pirate ship in danger call, and the first mate of that ship fancies me chicken. But I better be delivering their chicken soon. Most likely I won't even have time to cook it. Why is that? You see, I got me this delivery in 30 days or it's free policy. And I'd be running a bit behind. What are the pirates of Danger Cove like? They're a secretive lot, and I can't say I've seen too much of them. They seem to be what one would expect from a bunch of grand swinging pirates. As filthy and hairy a bunch of swabs as you'd ever hope to meet. But beware of their captain. From what I hear, he's got the disposition of a shark in need of a root canal. If he be catching you near his boat, you'll be tortured for sure. Don't you ever like to get outside the shop? Hi, I love the outdoors, especially the beach. Why, I'm in fact a member of the Brimstone Beach Club in Smorgie. Been a member there for years. How did you become a member? I threatened to run them all through. Then I lost me membership card. Last time I remember having it, it was in me breast pocket. I believe I was in the kitchen preparing some grub. Then I had that awful sneezing fit. Oh, that was bad. No matter. I guess I'll just have him issue me a new one. Nice gold tooth you have there. Hi! It glistens like the golden topping of grease on me luscious batter fried chicken. I'll let you get back to work. Hi. The devil chicken. Biscuits and more. I wonder what the more is. That looks delicious. Oh, this biscuit is full of maggots. Aye, <laughs> that's my special ingredient. That's just the right amount of exotic flavor. It's a good thing, too, because I can't keep them out of the food around here. It's a good heaping handful of healthy, wriggling maggots. Drop and give me 20, you maggots. I could squish these little guys, but they're kind of cute. Value meal. Two drumsticks plus super slaw. Looks like a fine deal if you like slaw. Traditional grog. Brewed the old-fashioned way. The unsanitary way. Bucket O booty. A captain-sized bucket of eyes, beaks, and talons. Blondebeard super slaw. Our own blend of shredded palm fronds and seaweed. It's a pie pan. It's a round biscuit cutter. He's not much of a talker. Hey, mister. Mister, you listening? Ah! It's one of LeChuck's skeletal horde. Aye. 
I fix his little red dinghy, but good. Mm, the undead that walk among us must surely be destroyed, lest their evil like overrun and befoul the world of the living. Aye, and he complained about me checking. Oh. This whole sordid scene has litigation written all over it. It says, ask me about Grim Fandango. What can you tell me about Grim Fandango? Anything? I don't like to speak ill of the dead, but this guy's lousy at marketing. I don't want people always asking me about Grim Fandango. This is the greasiest, crustiest, most revolting chicken I've ever seen. I don't even like looking at it, much less touching it. I can't eat that. The fumes alone would kill me. No, this chicken is too hard to be damaged by mere metal. Ugh. Brimstone Beach Club. Member since 1632. Yo-ha! Ha! That meat-flavored gum be looking mighty, mighty tempted. But right now, I be having this insane craving for something crunchy. Something to crack me teeth on. Something crispy and crackly, like me mouth water and tongue torture and chicken and lighter fluid special. Hi, if I hadn't lost all me chickens, I could be savoring that succulent bitter squab right now. Dude's chicken shop. It's as thick as gravy. I won't be able to find anything in this mud by fishing around with my hand. It's an old crow's nest, converted into a sign for the chicken shop. It's some pre-chewed meat-flavored gum. It's a membership card to the Brimstone Beach Club. This proves I'm a member. Nothing I love more than a good jawbreaker. Me too. Yeah, see, when you look at it that way, we're really not all that different, you and I. Whatever. Could I have your jawbreaker? No. It's been a pleasure. Bye. You know, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. I think we've, well, we've bonded. Jack Rackaham. Always a dapper crook. Jack wore the layered look. Captain Steve Grummet. He fought and he struggled. He kicked and he brawled. But when he left our shop, we made sure he was bald. 
Thomas Lewd. Here was a dangerous man when accosted, but he looked pretty good when his hair had been frosted. Edward Screech. When it came to rum, Edward Screech never skimped. He drank a whole bottle while he had his hair crimped. Rachel Squall. This lady, we're certain, was no debutante. She killed 20 men while she wore this buffon. Hi. It's a choking pirate. How did you do that? Oh, it was nothing really. Just sudden pressure applied below the sternum to expel a foreign object from the windpipe. That's amazing. I owe you my life. From now on... Yes? From now on, that will be known as the Threepwood Maneuver. Nah. It's only got a little bit of spitting hair on it. Are you still undecided about joining my crew? No, I've decided. You're clearly incapable of serving as my captain. You're no match for me in a gentleman's duel. And your gross incompetence at even the simplest of... No! Oh! Hey! Why did you slap me again? Just felt like it. Let's take this outside, shall we? Choose your weapon. It's the lid to the box of pistols. It's a banjo case. I choose the banjo. I accept. You do? What's the matter, brush boy? Can't you keep up? Uh, I'm sorry, I just lost myself in the beauty of the melody. Would you like to try again? Sure, I'm just getting warmed up. Thank you. 
pretty good boy. Let's see you follow this. He's good. I'll we'll never beat him. They're made from palm trees. I'm not contesting the caber toss right now. Ooh, who sure knows how to play that banjo? shot my banjo. You can't be sure of that. That shot may have come from the grassy knoll. Of all the low-down tricks, I never heard of anything so low. I completely misjudged you. You are a pirate after all. I'd be proud to join your crew. Great. I'll just pack this stuff up and get ready. And give me back my gun. I'll need two more sailors for my crew. Are you ready to set sail for adventure? Of course. I'll meet you on board your ship when you're ready. Would you like this jawbreaker? Thanks to ye! Ouch! I think I loosed me gold tooth! Arr, I knew sweets were being pad for me teeth, but it had a fine crunch and were a fiesta of flavor. From now on, I'll be sticking to fleshier foodstuffs. Something... something chewy. Well, there I go again. This old salt's got a craving for something to squish between me teeth. Would you like some gum? Thanks. Hmm. This is really good steak-flavored gum. It gets you here. And it gets you right here. Hmm. I don't want gum all over my hands. Why, you little scam. <laughs> That's quite a funny trick you've played on old Cap and Blonde Beard. It's a gold tooth. Hey! Where do you think you be going in such a hurry? I don't suppose you know where me missing gold tooth be? Uh, no. Then what do you call that then? Oh, that. I thought it was a rock in my shoe. I was going to take it outside. Sure you was. Give it back. More gum? Well, it looks like you swallowed the last piece I gave you. Thanks. Hmm. Bubble, did you? You got me again.
He's not much of a talker. He's dead. I don't want to touch him. It's a gold tooth. This gold tooth feels slimy. I don't need a gold tooth. I've still got all my originals. The gold tooth is in the gum. Second. Do you have me gold tooth? Uh, no. Let me see. You don't have it. Darn. I'll have to order a new one. I wonder where that tooth fell. It's an old crow's nest, converted into a sign for the chicken shop. Mm, no. It's part of the complex drainage system for Blonde Beard's chicken shop. There's nothing inside. It's as thick as gravy. And I won't be able to find anything in this mud by fishing around with my hand. I can't use the reed with that. Hey, it's the gold tooth! Check this out. Is that real gold? I guess you can find treasure. So you'll join my crew? Sure, as long as my partners will join too. I'll need one more sailor for my crew. Excuse me. Yes, you filthy little man. My card. Let me see that. Oh no! In the name of all things clean, you've got a membership! Yes. And I think I'll just take one of your fluffy clean towels and enjoy a nice relaxing stroll down your beach. No! You mustn't! I must. And perhaps I'll sunbathe nude. Sweet mother of pearl, no! Now that I think about it, it is nice out on the far end of the beach. You should go there. You should go there now. Ouch! With these holes in my shoes, I'll never get across that hot beach. It's burning hot. Mm, no. Oh, cabana boy. 
Yes. It's quite hot. Put your towel and mop my brow, would you? Can I have another look at that card of yours? Uh, actually, the towels are right here. I'll just help myself. Nice fluffy towel. One hot beach. Nice fluffy towel. I'll just take one more. I have three towels. I'm already dry. It's a nice bucket for a bottle of sparkling grog. The towels are all wet now. They feel ice cold. He's incredibly pale. I'm Guybrush Threepwood. Very nice to meet you, Mr. Threewood. I am Palido. Palido Domingo. I am so glad you're here. Finally. Someone on this island with some manners. And my drink needs refreshing. Take it away and bring me another. I don't think you understand. I'm a mighty pirate. I'm sorry, babe. I really sincerely am. Perhaps I didn't use the magic word. Take this drink away and bring me another. Now! Wow, you're pale. Look, babe. I haven't been sunbathing for very long, so cut me some slack. How long have you been out here? Since March. I'm looking for Blood Island. Do you know where it is? Nope. Never heard of it. That's funny. Slappy Cromwell told me you booked all his shows there. Cromwell? I should have known. If I booked that guy in a dinghy, there'd be empty seats. So you do know how to get to Blood Island? Yeah, yeah. They had a really nice room there, too. The Good Soup Plantation Resort Hotel and Casino. It was the place to go before they moved the shipping lanes. I used to book so many gigs there, I had the map tattooed on my back. Uh, on your back? All those little yellow sticky notes just kept getting lost. Oh. Why did you lie and say you didn't know how to get to Blood Island? I, I, I just don't want to say. What? It's your face, babe. There, I said it, babe. I hope you can forgive me. I just gotta be honest. I just didn't think you were the right type for Blood Island. That's not some place I picture your career going right now. Let me get you a booking somewhere that's in your league. I can gig you at this little shoe factory in Hoboken. It's Blood Island or nothing. If that's the way it's gotta be, babe, then that's the way it's gotta be. But you're gonna have to find new representation, okay? Can I see your map to Blood Island? You can see it when I roll over to tan my back. When will that be? Could be a long time, babe. A very, very, Long time. Please let me see the map to Blood Island. You can see it when I roll over to tan my back. But babe, that may be a very long while. Would you like to join my crew? Oh no, babe. I'm not a sailor. I make my living up the hard work and talent of others. You're a project leader on a computer game? No, no. I'm a high-powered talent agent. Major stars. We're talking major stars here. Are you sure you won't join my crew? Don't talk to me about work, babe. I'm tanning. I've seen correctional fluids with better color than you. Yeah, babe. 
I'm not the tannest cat around, but as you can see, I'm working on it. You look like you've lived under a rock your whole life. My complexion is a little on the light side, I'll give you that, but soon I'll be a bronzed god. You've got the savage pale. Please, babe. If you say any more, I will become very self-conscious. See you around. It's Palido's ugly mug. And it's also empty. I'd rather go around the long way than go across that hot sand. May I please have some of your oil? That oil is solely for the use of the fry station technician. This guy is being a real wet blanket. Oh, cabana boy. Tell me more about my membership benefits. The Brimstone Beach Country Club in Smorgie is the exclusive resort hideaway for only the most discerning pirates and their families. Here you'll be pampered by a courteous staff, oh, always eager to meet your every need, whether it be recommending a keel hauling class, finding a fourth for bridge, or giving a golf lesson on our award-winning course designed by Pegleg Malloy. Free valet ship parking included. Are you going to give me my money back? No! Can I get you anything else? Yeah, goodbye, you little brigand. Bye, mister! Plain meat-flavored gum? That is like so 1650s. It's a mug with a hole in the bottom. Look, a three-headed monkey. Oh boy, oh boy. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell. Hey! Just because you're a grown-up doesn't mean you can waste my time. Give me some more lemonade, you little chiseler. That'll be a nickel. Ah, that was as refreshing as morning dew. Hey! How did you drink all the lemonade? You switched mugs on me, you cheat. I hope you're happy. You put a budding young entrepreneur out of business. I don't need it anymore. It's an empty pitcher. This feels like a solid pitcher. It's empty. It's a great big vat full of red dye. Number two. It's full of dye now.
What a pastoral looking beach. I can't reach the beach. Nah. Triangulation of crossfire, that's the key. These are distance markers for the caber toss. They're just chalked on the grass. There are ants crawling all over it. Sumatran rubber tree. Donated to Puerto Pollo by our Sumatran sister city of Vacaville. This tree is the only one of its kind in the entire Western Hemisphere and stands as an everlasting symbol of the friendship between our two cities. There are other ants crawling all over it. Caribbean rubber tree. One of the many rubber trees common throughout the Caribbean used as raw material for shipbuilding. This knife might cut through regular wood, but not a rubber tree. And the tree's too rubbery to cut with scissors. It's a large rubber plug. It's an enormous keg of old Gut Blast brand rum. Nah, I need to keep a clear head for now. Well, I like rum as much as the next pirate, but that's a little much. It's a wooden sawhorse supporting that keg of rum. It's too heavy for me to move. I can't saw this horse with scissors. I don't want to singe that with this ember. It's a trail of rum leaking from the keg. I think even I have too much dignity for that. Spinning. I gotta lay off the rum. Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? It's as I told you, Guybrush. Not until you can best me in the caber toss. Sounds great. Let's do it. The spiraling bouffant of my great Uncle McManus. Never before have I seen such strength. Sure, I'll join your crew. I'll wait at the shop until you're ready to leave. Well, I got my whole crew. Are you ready to set sail for adventure? Aye. I'll be on board your ship when you're ready for me. Are you ready to set sail for adventure? Sure. Whatever. I'll meet you on your ship when you're ready. It's been a pleasure. Bye. A barrel of grog. And a chicken. <laughs> Look at all this stuff, mate. Oh, that must have been some battle. Let's pull up anchor and make for Skull Island. King Andre will pay through the nose for all this loot. Wait a minute. There's something else. It's, uh, 
It's, it's some kind of footwear. Hey, those are nice boots. But they're still hot. Ow, 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 ow. For a homemade rubber plug, that worked very nicely. It won't stay in there. It's a bottle of paste. I need something to put the paste on. I can't paste that. I can't paste that. The plug is all pasty now. Looks like a light is on in the captain's cabin. I don't want anyone to know I'm here. That kind of window usually locks from the inside. I'll have to find another way in. Either it's a time-honored form of pirate torture, or just a loose board. Fifteen men on a dead man's... Huh. Who are you? Uh, Ensign Guybrush Streetwood reporting for duty, sir. Huh? Hmm. You don't look like a member of my crew. Honest, I'm the new guy. I haven't heard of any new recruits. I'll have to check that out with my captain. Your captain? Yes, Streetwood. You've come aboard the Sea Cucumber. I am Mr. Fossey, the first mate. And my captain? Why, he's the scourge of the seven seas! The dread pirate, Lechup. Yes, captain, it's on the table, sir. Lechup! That's right, Captain Lech. Yes, captain, just an intruder, sir. I'm dealing with him. He says you're to be tortured. Choose your punishment. You can either be tarred and feathered, or you can walk the plank. Oh, I walked that plank thing on the way up. Good enough? No. Sorry. Well, I suppose we'll have to go with walking the plank. We're trying to avoid using the tar and feathers. It's messy, and we need to save the tar for emergency leak repair. What do you say, men? Shall we make him walk the plank? Any last words, Threepwood? Nope, can't think of anything. All right, in you go! <laughs> That's all. There was no splash. Splash! Uh. It's my trusty rowboat. 
It's the plank they made me walk. I'll never be able to pick that up. It's the remnants of the ship's plank. I don't need the plank. Strange. The hold is full of broken luggage. It's a big old sloppy bucket of tar. Who's there? Again with the sneaking on board the ship! I don't know how or why you came back on board, but the next time you walk the plank will be your last! What's that, Captain? Vandals? Yes, sir. Darn feathers. I know it's messy, but it's the only torture we have left. Our illustrious captain has declared that you shall be tarred and feathered. I do now. Uh, hmm. I don't know. We've never done this before. <laughs> Aren't you humiliated? I guess so, but no more than usual. Well, just get lost then. It's the sea cucumber. I'd better not now. I think I'm starting to make those guys angry. Pollo Diablo! At last, one of my demonic brethren come to set me free! Oh, brother. Come, release me, so that I might run free alongside you as we terrorize the mortals of this island! I'm out of here. Wait! Don't leave! Poyo Diablo! The demon chicken! We don't serve your kind here. Made it! Get me the scissors! Eviscerate him! He'll regret ever setting claws in this place. I want the neck! En libertad, los prisioneros, y ahora vengo por ti. Well, you're not taking me without a fight. Ugh, this chicken grease washed off all the feathers. Whoops, I better keep quiet. Absolutely, Captain. I'll get right on it after I have my dinner. What's that, Captain? I eat too much fried chicken. Well, I... I've just got a weakness for chicken, that's all. I know you don't have any weaknesses, Captain LeChimp. You're an overachiever, a doer. I'm just a tiny little fly. LeChimp? 
the captain is an ape? Well, if the captain is an ape, then Mr. Fossey must be... Aye, aye, captain! Fresh bananas for the whole crew! An utter loon. What's that, captain? <laughs> Your parasites are bothering you. Well, of course I'll groom you, sir. You know, sir, finding this gold statue may be just the boost our crew needs. What, with the riches we get from this, we can get new and better ships and become the terror of the Caribbean! It's Mr. Fossey, the first mate. If he knows I'm here, he might do something even more horrible to me. It's the Dread Pirate Lechimp. I think Mr. Fossey is the only guy who can talk to him. That must be the map to where they buried Elaine. If I climb out this porthole, I'll wind up floating on the plank I cut. It's all over everything. The A, M, C's of ventriloquism. Uh, testing, testing, check one, two, uh, uh three. Uh-oh, I'm hearing the voices again. Uh, uh, Captain LeChimp, I'm, I, I'm the real brains behind this crew. Goon! What made me say that? I'm terribly sorry, Captain. I'm not picking nits off you anymore, Captain. Don't! Where did that come from? I don't want to throw my voice there. Yeah, this whole ship, it stinks like a zoo. <laughs> Why do I keep saying these things? You, you think you could maybe shave your back? It's really disgusting. I don't know why I said that, sir. I don't even think that. Permission to, to speak freely, sir. You're a big dumb monkey. Maybe I need some time alone, sir. I don't mean you any disrespect. <laughs> That's fun, but it doesn't seem to be making any difference. <clears throat> Mr. Fossey, I've been thinking. Are you all right, Captain? <laughs> you sound different. Don't interrupt. Sorry, sir. Maybe it's time we gave up pirating. I mean, take a look around at me, at the rest of the crew. We're all monkeys. You mean in the Darwinian sense, sir? No, I mean in the quite literal sense. Uh, have you noticed that the crew is happier swinging from the masts than swabbing the decks? I don't even want to mention what they've been flinging around the ship. Are you suggesting that I'm not disciplining the crew enough? No, I'm suggesting that we all give up this charade and go back to the trees. That's the life for a monkey, not sailing the seas for months on end. Well, I, if you feel so strongly about it, sir, I suppose I can't argue. I think our last order of business should be to dig up that statue and... It'll be tough on the men, sir, but I'll tell them that you think it best. Okay, but first we should dig up that statue and give it to... I'll make sure they understand that it's not their fault. Very good, and then we can dig up that statue and... Okay, never mind then. That must be the map to where they buried Elaine. It's two tickets for the Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts. I don't go in for all that highbrow, artsy theater stuff. Besides, if I want to enter the theater, I can always use the stage door. Mmm, my favorite. Plunderbread. Looks like mashed potatoes. Now that's a lot of cranberries. 
I didn't know corn grew in the tropics. Ah, it's a porcelain vase. Ah, I hate porcelain. It's a long story. I'll explain later. It's the Dread Pirate Lechimp. It's a tire swing. It's empty. It's empty. It's me again. How nice. Look, babe, you know I love your work and I respect you as an artist, but go get me that drink. Now look here, you... Get my drink and make it snappy. Now look here, you... Bring me a drink. Now! Hey, I can see my reflection in your chest. Thank you for your keen insight, my friend. Why don't you go do something useful now? Like inhale a puffer fish. Okay, babe? You're so pale you make snow look tan. Be quiet now. If I bleached chalk, it wouldn't be as pale as you. All right. All right. Yes. I'm very pale. Thank you. There. You've hurt me deeply and you know I mean it. Are you happy? Huh? Babe, are you happy? Are you happy now? Yes. I hate you. Get me a drink. Please let me see the map to Blood Island. You can see it when I roll over to tan my back. But babe, that may be a very long while. See you around. Here's your drink. Well, get me a mug, babe. May I please have some of your oil? That oil is solely for the use of the fry station technician. Oh, Cabana Boy, will you bury me in the sand? I'll start digging your grave right now. Oh, Cabana Boy. May I help you? Nothing. I just wanted to be sure that you're there for me. Oh! If you're trying to bribe me, it's not going to work. <laughs> There's got to be a way to settle this without bloodshed. Oh, Cabana Boy. May I help you? Nothing. I just wanted to be sure that you're there for me. Oh! Nice fluffy towel. A 
A dry towel just doesn't have that same sting. This towel is soaking wet. Papa Bishu! It's coconut cooking oil. Mmm, faux buttery goodness. Chicken franks, chock full of processed beaks and waddles. <laughs> Ugh, no. It looks like some of those are older than I am. I'd rather go around to the gate than go through that towel business again. I've brought you a new mug. Thanks. Here's your drink, sir. Look, Palido, you're burning. The sun in my tent is just gonna peel away. I better turn over. Good idea. I'll never memorize that map. It's far too complex. I can't just rip the map off his back. I don't want to ruin the map. That's barbaric! Because of his sunburn, the map on Palado's back is peeling off. I really wish I didn't have to do that. I think he's fallen asleep. It's the map to Blood Island. Peeled off Palado's back. Sorry. Hey, what do you know? I really am big bone. Uh-oh, quiet. Here comes Captain LeChuck. Avast ah! there, you lovers. Set sail for my stronghold on Monkey Island. I'll unleash my entire army of the undead. This time, Elaine will be mine! Ah, Elaine. It'll be a sweet day in hell when you feel the fiery breath of my kiss on your lips and become my undead bride. And I'll destroy any man who dares get in my way! Suffering sailors, tis good to be dead! <laughs>
The Long John Silver Center for the Performing Arts presents Spear. <coughs> he, you brute! Pinfall Caesar! Thank you, thank you. Oh, I just can't watch. Romeo! So, Juliet, ye be scheming for me treasure. Then parting with your life will be sweet sorrow. And I'll be missing ya. Oh, that was uncalled for. Alas, poor Yori. Murray! Sorry. Alas, poor Murray. He's disgusting because he's a corpse what ain't got no body. And I mean to eat you all. <laughs> this is where I came in. It smells like something's burning. Mm, must be this shoddy 17th century electrical wiring. Wait a second. Somebody's been monkeying around with these controls. That's it! That must be where Elaine is buried. And now, the moment I know you've all been waiting for! How about some amazing juggling? Is this a dagger I see before me? Oh, it's three! See how I juggle these knives? At great personal risk to myself. And to you, if I slip. He's a great juggler, but I sure wish he'd get off the stage so I can dig Elena. Alas, poor Yorick, I knew him. And his two pals. Whee! It looks like he's going to juggle these cannonballs. I don't want to haul those cannonballs around. It's all over everything. I need to use the chicken grease with something else. Uh-oh. It looks like he's coming for the cannonballs now. And now the ultimate Shakespearean delight. The famous cannonball juggling scene from Romeo and Juliet. Whoa! Oops! I'm glad it had a happy ending and he got the, um, got the girl in the end.
Elaine must be buried underneath the stage. I can't dig it up with my bare hands. It's a prop shovel. Elaine should be safe up in the crow's nest, for now. Well, I've got a crew, a map, a ship, and finally got Elaine back. So let's say we head on to Blood Island to lift the curse and save Elaine. How about it, guys? Let's get moving towards Blood Island. Let's head on out and find our fortune, guys. This might be more difficult than I first imagined. Ah, the sea. I, the sea. Makes you glad to be alive. I think that ship is following us. Feel that salty spray. The sunlight sparkling off the bay. What a glorious seafaring day. It's a pirate ship. We've got the outrunner. All right, men. Are you with me? Hey. Look, guys. A whale. Where? Where? That ship is gaining on us. Cutthroat Bill, rig the topsail. Is that a right whale? No, no lie. They're boarding us. Crew, help me out here. It is a member of the Cetus suborder, Mr. Shetty, though. I think you're right. Well, well. Riddingham, so it's you. What do you want, other than a good toupee? I've come for your map to the fabled blood alarm. Then I'll find the diamond you mentioned. It will make a fun paperweight for my escritoire. Ooh, look! It's breaching! Ooh! Ah! Look, Baldy, I'll never give you that map. I need it to save Elaine. Then I'll have to take it from you by force. That whale must be 30.5 meters. 100 feet. And weigh 200 metric tons. You know it, girls. In a sword fight, a sharp weed is much more important than a sharp blade. Of course. Everybody knows that, Chrome Dome. Let's get this over with. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. Oh, yeah? Well, you fight like a cow. No, 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 no. That's not right at all. What? On the sea, we fight it a little differently. On the sea, all your insults and threats have to rhyme. What? So when I say every enemy I've met, I've annihilated, you say... I once found some gold, but it was just electroplated? No! You say, with your breath, I'm sure they are suffocated. Let's try that again, shall we? You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Uh... I'm waiting. I... Uh, I... Just as I thought. You're an amateur with this world. Give me that map. Here, take it. That's your map? Yeah. As soon as I'm through pirating these waters, it's off to blood alone. Until we meet again, Monsieur Twibud. I've got to get that map back or we'll never find Blood Island. Thanks, guys. You were a world of help back there. It was a rousing battle, Captain. Aye, and it reminds me of a song. We're a band of vicious pirates a sailing out to sea. When you hear a gentle singing, you'll be sure to turn and flee. Oh, this is just ridiculous. Come on, men. We've got to recover that map. That pirate will be done for when he falls into our trap. We're a club of tune for rovers. We can sing in every clef. We can even hit the high notes. It's just too bad we're tuned deaf. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Let's go defeat that evil pirate. We know he's sure to lose, because we know just where to fire it. We're thieving balladeers. A gang of cutthroat mugs. To fight us off, you won't need guns. Just jolly good ear plug. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. All right, crew. Let's get to work. 
Our vocation's a thing we love, a thing we never shirk. We'll fight you in the harbor. We'll battle you on land. Oh, when you meet singing pirates. There'll be more than you can stand. Oh, that was a good one. No, it wasn't. Time for song, we got to move. The battle will be long, but our courage we will prove. We're a pack of scurvy sea dogs. Have we pity not a dram? We only roasted garlic. Dancing from the diaphragm. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Less singing, more sailing. When we defeat our wicked foe, his ship he will be bailing. If you try to fight us, you will get a nasty whacking. If you disrespect our singing, we will feed you to a cracking. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. I'm getting so sick of you guys and your rhyming. We're ready to set sail, though the cannons need a priming. Troublesome corsairs, and we've come to steal your treasures. We would shoot you on the downbeat, but we gotta rest five measures. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. Stop, stop, stop. The brass is what for polish, and the deck is what for mop. You say you're nasty pirates, steaming, thieving, bad bushwhackers. From what I've seen, I tell you, you're not pirates, you're just slackers. A pirate I was meant to be. Trim the sails and roam the sea. We'll surely avoid scurvy if we all eat an orange. And, um... Well, uh... Door hinge? No, no. Guess the song's over then. Guess so. Okay, back to work. Well, gee, I feel a little guilty now. Captain. Yes, Mr. McMahon. We were wondering, we were, just what kind of captain you are. What do you mean, Haggis? Well, some captains are men of action. They like to have complete responsibility and control for their ship. Other captains prefer to concentrate more on the thinking aspects of captaining. The captain who's a man of action will undoubtedly have a much more difficult time of defeating other scoundrels of the sea in the fast-paced realm of ship-to-ship -ship combat. The more academic captain will find the other pirate vessels he meets to be less aggressive and therefore far easier and quicker to defeat in combat. I see. So, Captain Threepwood, which type of captain be ye? I love a tough sea battle as much as the next captain. Challenging ship combat it is. It's empty. It's all wet and creepy in there. That's one weak looking cannon. I better save my ammo for battle. It's McMutton studying the map. Uh, Haggis? Yes? What am I doing here? Well, Captain Fritwood, if you e'er be hoping to defeat this Scalawag Rottingham ship to ship, we'll be needing some bigger cannon. So, lad, I say we tackle some of the wee pirates that prowl these waters. We'll seize their treasure and use it to buy new weaponry back at Puerto Pollo. Never mind. Hey. No, I'm terrible at folding up maps. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Every enemy I've met, I've annihilated. 
I am rubber, you are glue. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. Oh, yeah? You're ugly. Ha! Is that the best you can come up with? Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Well, that's very snide. You're the ugliest monster ever created. The wood paneling on my ship is simulated. I've beaten you. I will let you live if you give me your treasure. I haven't got any treasure. Why do you think I was attacking you? I guess I need more practice with this sword fighting stuff. Hey, at least I showed him in the high seas combat part. Well, well, well. I guess you've learned an important lesson about cheating. I sure have, mister. Golly, I'll never cheat on anyone ever again. Honest, I've got a new business now, and gosh, it's swell. What is it? I'm running guns. Tell me you're lying. I never lie anymore, mister. You've shown me the light. Can I interest you in some shrapnelizing ammunition designed to bring exquisite pain and unreasonable suffering to all your enemies? I'm a fearsome pirate. Well, you may be a pirate, even if you look more like a broom handle. But you aren't a fearsome pirate unless your ship is equipped with the latest in offensive weaponry from Bob's Big Boar Boomer Brand Cannon Incorporated. Gee, I guess you're right. But how can I ever hope to afford any first-class cannons? Like the ones manufactured by the master craftsmen at Bob's Big Boar Boomer Brand Cannon Incorporated. Well, duh. You did say you were a pirate, didn't you, mister? Well, yes. Go out on the high seas and plunder yourself some treasure. Once your treasure hold is chock full of booty, come back and we'll talk turkey. Okay. It's that brandy lemonade salesman, but he's selling cannon now. Kenny's blocked the way into town with this big pile of cannons. Treasure or your life? No! I'll take your booty! You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You're the ugliest monster ever created. I am rubber, you are glue. Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You win! Give me your treasure. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. Look at all that booty. It's so full I couldn't even walk down there. Back again, mister? What do you have for sale today? Today, customer name here. Uh, what's your name again? Guybrush Threepwood. Today, Mr. Leapgood, I can offer you the complete line from Bob's Big Board Boomer Brand Cannon Incorporated. To start with, we have the entry-level model, the Buccaneers Buddy. We also have the following cannon models available. The Ouch Master, the Hole Maker Deluxe, the Pain Giver 2000, Mr. Massacre, and finally, 
the cannon used by that most fearsome scoundrel, Rene Rottingham himself, the Destructomatic T-47. So, can I interest you in any of these models, mister? I'll take the Destructomatic T-47. You've just ordered the Destructomatic T-47 armor-piercing carnage delivery system with auto-loading and fax motor. Quite a fine piece of hardware, if I do say so myself. Now, will that be doubloons, jewels, captured maidens? My ship's hull is full of booty. Well, the amount in your treasure hold is not enough for this model. Not even if I take your old cannon and give you credit for the trade-in. Can I interest you in a less expensive model? I'll take the Buccaneer's Buddy. The Buccaneer's Buddy it is. Let me just check my stock. Yep, we got him. You will not be disappointed, my friend. I'll have my mom install your new cannon Prano. While she's at it, I'll also have her pick up the appropriate amount from your hold and pick up your trade-in. Mom! The Buccaneer's buddy. It's kind of pathetic. Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I look that much like your fiancé? <coughs> Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. My once favorite hat is now dilapidated. <coughs> You're the ugliest monster ever created. You'll digest food better if it's been masticated. Open your hole so I may take your treasure. Treasure? You wanted treasure? I'm sorry, I'm fresh out. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You're the ugliest monster ever created. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Oh, yeah. You win! Give me your treasure. You filthy, unwashed thing, you. Take it. It was cluttering up the hole anyway. We're loaded with booty. I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Ouchmaster. The Ouchmaster it is. Mom! Get off me deck, you sea slug. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. Don't make me laugh. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Is that your face? I thought it was your backside. On guard, touche. My, isn't this a lovely soiree? I'll hound you night and day. My favorite color is Battleship Gray. Give me your treasure. I haven't got any treasure. Why do you think I was attacking you? Unga, touche. I am rubber, you are glue. I can't rest till you've been exterminated. Then perhaps you should switch to decaffeinated. 
Throughout the Caribbean, my deeds are celebrated. I'd have a good comeback, but it's hard to get motivated. You're as repulsive as a monkey in a negligee. I look that much like your fiance? I'll hound you night and day. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. You win. Give me your treasure, yeah, grubby bilge swigger. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. The pain giver 2000 it is. Mom! Boarding a pirate ship can be hazardous to your life! I've come to plunder your treasure. I'll see you clapped in irons first. I'll hound you night and day. Then be a good dog. Sit. Stay. I leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated. My entire wardrobe is color coordinated. Vanguard, Tushi. I'd like to see this sword fight on instant replay. Hunger, touche! Oh, that is so cliche! I'll skewer you like a sour to buffet! I tend to use a lot of hairspray. You're the ugliest monster ever created! If you don't count all the ones you've dated. Throughout the Caribbean, my great deeds are celebrated. Too bad they're all fabricated. I'll leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated. Your odor alone makes me aggravated, agitated, and infuriated. Would you like to be buried or cremated? This isn't going as well as I'd anticipated. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. I carry traveler's checks that are accepted worldwide. Open your hole so I may take your treasure. If I had treasure, don't you think I'd spend it before grappling with the likes of you? I, I suppose you would. Never mind, then. Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Is that your face? I thought it was your backside. You're the ugliest monster ever created. If you don't count all the ones you've dated. Would you like to be buried or cremated? With you around, I prefer to be fumigated. I leave you devastated, mutilated, and perforated. Your odor alone makes me aggravated, agitated, and infuriated. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. I am rubber, you are glue. You win! Give me your treasure. Yeah, grubby bilge swigger. Ah, uh, take it. It was cluttering up the hold anyway. We're loaded with booty. One Mr. Massacre coming right up. Mom! Be 
treasure you wanted. I've come to plunder your treasure. Good luck, boy. I'll skewer you like a sow at a buffet. I'm shaking, I'm shaking. Would you like to be buried or cremated? Oh, yeah? Coming face to face with me must leave you petrified. Is that your face? I thought it was your backside. I'll hound you night and day. But then be a good dog. Sit, stay. You win. Give me your treasure. The treasure is yours. We're loaded with booty. Back again, mister? I'd like to buy some cannons for my pirate ship. I'll take the Destructomatic T-47. Whoa, mister. You've entered a select group of pirates. Mom! It's the Destructomatic T-47 armor-piercing carnage delivery system with auto-loading and fax modem. I better save my ammo for battle. Look who is washed up on my deck. Give me my map, you fiend. Hmm. This may prove amusing. You have the sex appeal of a Sharpe. Uh, could you repeat that? You have the sex appeal of a Sharpe. In case of an earthquake, stand in a doorway. Your lips look like they belong on the catch of the day. A dentifrice helps prevent tooth decay. My skills with a sword are highly venerated. Okay, I give up. Now get off my boat, before I maroon you on the island of clumsy dental assistance. How dare you attack me, ship? I don't have any treasure, you know. I know that. Why bother, then? I need the practice. Fair enough. When your father first saw you, he must have been mortified. At least mine can be identified. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. I found a $3 bill, but I don't think it was bona fide. How dare you attack my ship? I don't have any treasure, you know. Practice again? Yep. Okay. Killing you would be justifiable homicide. Then killing you must be justifiable fungicide. Kevin preserve me. You look like something that's died. Oh yeah? Kevin preserve me. You look like something that's died. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. You can't match my witty repartee. I would have avoided the volcano had I built Pompeii. You can't match my witty repartee. I could if you would use some breath spray. What do you want, Monsieur Throbwimp? Give me my map, you fiend. 
I've nothing to fear from you, urchin. Nothing can stop me from blowing you away. Oh yeah? My skills with a sword are highly venerated. My once favorite hat is now dilapidated. When I'm done, your body will be rotted and putrefied. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. You're a disgrace to your species. You're so undignified. At least mine can be identified. I give you a choice. You can be gutted or decapitated. With you around, I'd prefer to be fumigated. Nothing on this earth can save your sorry hide. The only way you'll be preserved is in formaldehyde. You'll find I'm dogged and relentless to my prey. Then be a good dog. Sit. Stay. Your lips look like they belong on the catch of the day. When I'm done with you, you'll be a boneless filet. Sacre bleu! I cannot believe it! I have been defeated in battle! So give me that map, take your ship and skedaddle. You win, you win, you'll get your map back. You were doomed from the start, you kleptomaniac. All right, all right, I give up already. It's no wonder you lost with a sword so unsteady. Merci, I beg you, no more insults, please. Your smell and face remind me of moldy old cheese. Ah! We got the map back. Now we can sail to Blood Island. I blacked out for a second. Where's Elaine? She flew a wee bit into the woods when we crashed. Then let's get going. We'll find her, then scour the island for the uncursed diamond ring that'll transform her back to normal. I don't be thinking we will, lad. What do you mean? I, I, I mean, what do you mean, Haggis? This be a mutiny, Captain. We're leaving you. Did I mention that I'm offering my crew a very attractive pension plan? Ah, uh, you did. And the stock options. But we're still leaving. But why, Haggis? Why? Well, I admit being your pirate crew's been a real pleasure. A real pleasure. But we've grown restless. We can hear the voice of the siren calling to us, and she says she'd be wanting us to do her hair. You're going back to being barbers? Aye. We'll be sailing back to Plunder Island just as soon as we can fix the ship. Good luck, Captain Driftwood. It were a pleasure to be looting with you. I guess I'm on my own again. Uh, Haggis? Aye. Mutiny's a big step. Uh, are you sure you won't reconsider? Aye, lad, we're all agreed. We'd rather feel the spray of detangler in our faces than the spray of the ocean. How are the repairs coming? 
Well, lad, things could be worse. There's plenty of lumber on this island, so we'll be able to repair all the major holes in the hull. We'll also be adding a hardwood dance floor on the Lido deck. Nice. Hey, it's something we've been talking about for a while. Are you sure you don't want to be pirates again? I wish you would. We'd all rather be cutting hair than cutting throats. Well, except for Bill. Well, of course. You mutineers at best beware. Beware of what? Well, for one thing, I'll put a terrible pirate curse on you. Could you be turning Bill into solid gold, like your girlfriend? Yeah, I guess that's not much of a threat. No lie. Hi, that's a big bottle of lotion you have there. That's right, she be. And don't you be getting any ideas about stealing it. We are sure to be needing it, you see. Carpentry on this tropical climate can and will prematurely age your skin. Tis but one of the many hardships a pirate must face daily during this barbarous age. Aye, and if we pirates didn't carry hand lotion aboard all our ships, we'd probably die from the chafing. Wow, if I were doing a history report on pirates and I included that fact, I'd get an A+. We're talking guaranteed A+. And that A+, just might get you into the college of your choice. Think about it. There's no way that I can have even a drop of lotion? Well, maybe we could make a deal. You see, we need to be repairing the ship. She's leaky as a colander. And for some unknown reason, the ship supplies of tar have been depleted. How the previous crew could set sail without any tar aboard eludes me. But the fact is, unless we get us some tar or something like it, we're doomed to this island for good. Hey, I'd give you the whole blooming bottle of lotion if you could find me something to patch the ship so we can be on our way home. I'll let you get back to work. Those advertisements were no lie. It really is crystal clear. It's a bottle of Captain Nick's shaving soap with a cork in it. It must have fallen from the barber's supplies when the ship wrecked. It's a corked bottle of shaving soap. Well, I can't pull the cork out with my hands. It's haggis. It's a bottle of soothing hand lotion. Drop that. You can have it when you find me something I can use to patch the ship. It's the map to Blood Island, peeled off Palado's back. We already know our way back, thank you. Elaine looks like she's all right. Hang on, honey. I'm going to get you out of this mess. Uh, it's that accursed, cursed ring. That ring is really stuck on her finger. Don't you think that's just a tad drastic? They sure are bright. They're too small and fast for me to catch with my hands. It doesn't look like she's hurt. Well, except for that whole turn to gold by a pirate curse thing. I don't think she can hear me. No offense, Elaine, but you are way too heavy for me to haul you around. It's a rocky part of the beach. I don't need any rocks. It's a big egg sitting precariously at the top of that tree. I can't reach it. 
Hmm. Lost Welshman Ferry Line. Haunted sea cruises and whale watching excursions daily. Wow, I never knew the Caribbean had so many rubber trees. I can't shake it hard enough with just my hands. Drink grog. She's a very atmospheric gypsy fortune teller. Madam Eczema. Zima, Madam Zima, Madam Zima, Madam Zima! Mistress of the ancient arts of precognition and augury. Diva of divination. Cool, you're a fortune teller. Ah, that and so much more. I feel a dark presence coming over me. Hi there. Ah! Ah, please, keep it down. No screaming. Oh, my head. Do you know anything about the lost Ring of Blood Island? I sense tremendous sorrow in connection with that ring, and a great part missing. A beautiful diamond. Where's the diamond? I see a dark cave filled with evil men, and a place of death. A dark island in the form of a giant skull. Tell me my fortune! Tell me my fortune! I do not think you wish to hear. There are things of which a man is better off being ignorant. Oh, but I'm already ignorant of so many things. I want to know my future. No, you are not meant to know. I bet you just can't do it. That's the problem. You can't do it, and you're afraid everyone will find out you're just a phony. You know, I could put a curse on you that would make every morsel of food you eat become a ravenous cockroach inside your intestines, giving you the most excruciating death imaginable. So are you going to tell me my fortune or not? I'm not kidding. OK, OK. What's in the cards for me? Fame, fortune, romance? Ah, very well. We will consult the cards. The process of reading the tarot is a very complex one. Each draw of the cards foretells an upcoming event in your life. When assembled, they will tell the story of your future. A future filled with twists and... Ah! Good Lord, woman, stop that screaming. What is it? Is that a good... Ah! It is death. Well, in the tarot, death just means change, right? I mean, it's nothing to get worried about, right? I uh, sure, whatever you say. Now, please go. It says death. I wonder what that signifies. No ID, no grog. Just one more example of how the man keeps us down. It says we welcome your tips. Leave that alone, and someone kill that man with a jackhammer. It's the bartender. Hi, I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm... A... Stop yelling. I wasn't yelling, I was just... Ah, oh, I've got a terrible hangover. Find something to clear my head and I can talk to you. And keep it down.
would you happen to know any good hangover remedies? My people are adept at the art of clearing the foggy head. The process is simple. First, you must find four dozen leeches. Leeches? Then hang the victim upside down from the top of a birch tree. Upside down? Build a fire underneath the victim using 20 gallons of alcohol and bat excrement as fuel. Excrement? Remove all your clothes and dance about the bonfire, chanting in the language of the ancients. Okay, hold it. This is getting a little bit weird. What can I say? It works. <laughs> Thanks, but I think I'll try something else. Never mind. It's full of brochures for Big Whoop. The place for pirates and pirates at heart. It says, visit Big Whoop for an eternity of pain and torment. I mean, fun and laughter. If you're a pirate with a sturdy skeletal structure and a high threshold for pain, but high threshold for pain is crossed out and replaced with craving for adventure, then Big Whoop is the place for you. Visit Big Whoop. Do it right now. There's no pictures or maps or anything. It just says that it's an awful lot of fun. Honest. It's a picture of a really goofy looking pirate wannabe. Oh, wait. Mmm, pickles. Nah, they go straight to my hips. Pirate potables. Yeah, gross. It's Count Gaspacho Good Soup, the cold hearted canning magnet. It's the Duchess Cream of Good Soup, of the Noodle Good Soups. Baron C. Lambert Chowder Good Soup, pioneer of crouton technology. He looks a lot like the guy at the bar. Minerva Stronheim Good Soup, Baroness of Borscht. It looks out onto the cemetery. I'd rather leave it open. There's a peculiar odor in this hallway. Comfy. No time for that now. I've got a fiancé to rescue. It's locked. It's a door with a porthole in it, for that nautical accent. I can see the hallway. It's a bunch of old portraits of the Van Salad family. And I thought the good soups were a homely bunch. I don't have any use for portraits of the Van Salad family. It's a big nail. I can't pull it in.
looks comfortable. The cushion is starting to come off this bar stool. I don't carry around other people's spit anymore. I've grown past that stage. I see a dashing young pirate in this mirror. No, no, don't touch that. Oh, my head. I'm sure it's never been cleaned. Please, stop touching things. I swear I'll never drink again. That fork is stuck in all that congealed cheese. It's a refrigerator freezer with a magnet on it. It's a big whoop souvenir magnet. I really don't want to know what's in there. Extended family size processed cheese food spread. I think this is the stuff they use to make nachos. I can't pick up that entire wheel of cheese. No thanks, I'm not that hungry. I need something to chip off a chunk with. It's labeled Good Soup Family Records. I'm sure it's just a bunch of legal stuff I couldn't hope to understand. There must be some mistake. Read my tarot cards again. There is no mistaking your fate, Guybrush. The cards do not lie. But if you insist, once again, it is death. Two death cards. Feel the power of the ancient volcano goddess in Griswold Good Soup presents High Explosive, the most intense shogo cabaret in the Caribbean. Starring Wilhelmina, temptress of the caldera. Nightly at seven. Looks like it was quite a show. It's a big, heavy looking cast iron cooking pot. I'm not gonna carry around that heavy iron pot for no reason. This barbecue is too cold to cook anything. We all need more iron in our diet, but not like this. Your company name here. Blood Island Municipal Housing for the Deceased. It's locked. It says Tex Venture. The Good Soup Family Crypt. It's locked. It's locked tight. I can't see anyone in there right now. It says Old Blind Pew. It's a smelly old dog.
Well, he's just not very social, I guess. It's beginning to spell a word. What could it be? Rib roast? Riboflavin? It's the gravedigger's chisel. It's a big wooden mallet. That's not my job. It's every bit as stinky as the rest of this dog. He's not very talkative. He'd probably like the bone, but I might need it. It's a smelly old dog. Okay, fella, this won't hurt a bit. Hey, I guess it didn't hurt a bit. He must be shedding. It's the hair of the dog that bit me. I hope the owner of this shack doesn't sleep in that. Mm, no. Miller the Sot. Here lies old Miller. He's far past his prime. He drank some weed killer with a half twist of lime. They're spinning around the top of the windmill. There's a barrel at the top of the windmill. I can't reach it. It's locked. I can't hold on with my bare hands. It's a chili pepper. It's a wild pepper plant. I only need one. Pepper, you're going undercover. I've never been a good cook. It's a big egg sitting precariously at the top of that tree. I can't shake it hard enough with just my hands. It's a big wooden mallet. The egg would break when it hit the ground. It's a rocky part of the beach. 
It's a soft cushion. It's a big egg. Nah. What was that I... Shh, just get me the ingredients for a hangover remedy and I'll talk to you. I found this egg for your hangover remedy. Shh. Thanks. Here's a wild pepper for your hangover remedy. This is some of the hair of the dog that bit me. Shh. Thanks. That's all the ingredients I need. Let me quietly mix up a dose. Ah, much better. Here, you can take the rest. I don't believe we've met. Who are you? I am Griswold, last of the good soups and proprietor of this hotel. You may have heard of us and our soup restaurant resort empire that stretches across the Caribbean. Well... Oh, this was once our proudest resort. In recent years, however, hard times have befallen the family good soup and left me alone in this rotting hotel. The Good Soup Plantation Resort Hotel and Casino. How's business? Oh, I need another drink. Not good, I take it. Just look around. No guests, no food, no entertainment. Not even the cannibals will come here. My only regular is a spooky old fortune teller who gives everyone the creeps. Uh, no offense, Adam Zima. A pax on your firstborn. Hmm, yes, right. Why don't you try to liven the place up a little? Well, that's quite a story. Years ago, this hotel was one of the hottest destinations in the Caribbean. People came from around the globe to see our world-famous dinner show. You may have noticed the oddly-shaped barbecue out on the patio. Yes, I did notice that. Well... That barbecue was the centerpiece of our nightly entertainment. Isn't a barbecue the central attraction of most sophisticated nightlife activities? Maybe, but no one else had a barbecue like this one. Every night the guests would gather round on the patio and at precisely six o'clock. You'd make chewy delicious s'mores? No. Do you want to hear the story or not? I'm sorry, I'm fascinated. Please, go on. Well, every night at precisely six o'clock, the volcano would erupt and the lava would flow down the side of the mountain and into the special trough that runs beneath the barbecue. The guests absolutely loved it. Isn't that some kind of fire hazard? Well, we'd get a case of severe third-degree burns every now and then but everybody agreed that it was worth it. That volcano was a showstopper. One day, the volcano just inexplicably stopped erupting. Without our main attraction, the resort just lost its appeal. We've gone downhill ever since, and the volcano hasn't erupted to this day. Tragic. What happened to all the guests? After the place started to run down, they all checked out. All except 
for one. The guest that never left. Is this going to be scary? Because I warn you. Every night we heard strange noises coming from his room. Frightful crashing sounds that shook the entire hotel, each followed by the most horrible screaming and cursing. Then, one night, the sounds just stopped, but were replaced with a terrifying wailing and moaning. I had the room sealed and vowed never to enter that hateful place again. Would you let me into the guest room upstairs? No. It is locked for a reason. Let no man disturb the dark spirits who occupy that room. Maybe if you tried a more aggressive marketing scheme. I've tried everything. Pamphlets, stickers, extensive print campaigns. I even tried passing out vials of my own blood imprinted with the slogan, My parents went to Blood Island, and all I got was this lousy plasma sample. That's just gross. Well, with the benefit of hindsight, I suppose it is. Well, maybe if you booked some more entertainers. I booked a juggling act here a while back, but that didn't work out. Rather a moody guy. Kept talking about suffering for his art and all that. The guests hated him. They actually cheered when he burst into flame during his firewalking act. Maybe if you focused on Blood Island's rich history. What history? The island has a windmill and a lighthouse. There's not a whole lot to see. Eh, that's a shame. Sorry I brought it up. What do you know about the lost ring of Blood Island? Oh, that's a very sad chapter in my family's history. My great-aunt Minnie Stroney Goodsoup was a well-to-do member of Blood Island society. Her one weakness was her romantic nature. She had a thing for pirates, one in particular. He came into port, she fell instantly in love, and they were engaged within the week. Then, on the eve of their wedding, he stole the fantastic Good Soup diamond from her ring and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the empty engagement band on her finger until the day she died which was not long after. Some say she still haunts the Good Soup family tomb. It is a sad story, is it not? Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. Uh, could you repeat that? Get lost, Chowderhead. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? I'll take a drink that simply reeks of sophistication. I've got a drink that simply reeks. Take it or leave it. I'll take it. Sure, sure. Neat. Ah, Papa Pichu. Here's your glass back. I see a dashing young pirate in this mirror. It's me. Uh, hypothetically, how would one get into your aunt's tomb? I suppose you would have to die. Oh, crud. How can I get out to Skull Island? Well, there used to be a regular ferry out to Skull Island. Used to? One cold night, so the tale goes, the Welshman set out in his dinghy. The deep fog around Skull Isle obscured even the moon, but the Welshman could see the distant light of the Blood Island lighthouse. When it rode half the distance, the light in the lighthouse was mysteriously smashed, and the poor Welshman was lost, almost never to be seen again. Uh, almost? Well, there are those who say that late at night, if you stare into the fog long enough, you may see the flying Welshman rowing in his ghostly dinghy, lost for all eternity. Creepy. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island.
Head be clear for clearing foggy heads. Childproof caps? I can't open it. I'm feeling luckier. Give me another tarot reading. Luck is not involved here, Guybrush. It is your destiny. Whatever. Let's see what the cards say this time. The card says death. Are you sure you're not dealing from the bottom of the deck? Remember that curse I told you about? Okay, okay. Hit me. Death. How many of those cards do you have, anyway? Four death cards? Here. Did you just take my mirror? Nope. You're lying, aren't you? Yes. Put it back. All right, all right. Sheesh, what a grouch. What was that? Nothing. It's empty. That jar's for my tips. Put it back. But I was gonna put a whole lot of money in it. Too much for me to carry around with me. So I'm gonna have to take it with me and fill it up. Oh, okay then. Extended family size processed cheese food spread. I think this is the stuff they use to make nachos. This village is deserted. How curious. It's a table covered with different fruits and vegetables. I'm not hungry right now. Well, I haven't gotten any use for this fruit. Very classy. It looks like kidney pie. Nah. It's an auger. It's decorative yet functional. It's a hand carved mask in the likeness of Leroy, God of Pudding. It looks like a ship's skipper, first mate, a professor, and the rest. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, a mighty pirate. A pirate, huh? Well, then you must realize the inherent danger in wandering into a village populated by cannibals. You know, I can hold my breath underwater for ten minutes. I see. What if the water's boiling? Do you think you could last about 45 minutes? 
It's been so long since I've made any bullion. How I did love bullion. But we are no longer vicious and bloodthirsty cannibals. No? No. We underwent a paradigm shift in our belief system several years ago. A paradigm shift? You don't say. We decided we wanted to live a healthy cannibal lifestyle. Completely cut back on our fatty missionary intake and went vegetarian altogether. But there certainly was a time I would have eaten you. Young guy like you, not too much muscle. Hey! I'd probably marinate you in white wine for 45 minutes. Dip you in a light corn batter. Wrap you in banana leaves and bury you in a pit with a hundred hot coals. Let you roast overnight. Then I'd serve you on a bed of basmati rice with a garnish of shiitake mushrooms and shallots. <laughs> but not anymore, right? <laughs> but, but not anymore, right? Huh? Oh, yeah, right, right. You look familiar somehow. Perhaps it's because I look like a big lemon. Oh, yeah. But it's more than that. We've met before, back on Monkey Island. Ah, uh, Monkey Island. We had a nice village there. Rent-controlled huts close to the good schools. Those were the salad days, so to speak, till they put in that darned carnival. Carnival? Yes, carnival. Just as soon as they put up the first tent, whoosh, the whole place becomes trendy. Sailors coming in at all times of the night, that awful music droning on and on. And to be honest with you, I think the Midway games are rigged. Yeah, yeah. At night, it wasn't safe for a cannibal to walk the island alone. Aren't you afraid the volcano will destroy your village? The volcano? Oh, no. Mount Acidophilus is completely harmless. We have curried favor with Sherman, the all-powerful god of the volcano. The god of the volcano likes spicy foods? Shut up, or I'll eat you. Okay. When we first landed on this island, the volcano god was most upset. Belching out smoke, vomiting up lava. It was disgusting, really. And potentially hazardous. We knew we had to do something to pacify the volcano god, and we assumed a good sacrifice would do the trick. A reasonable assumption. But when we threw the sacrifice into the volcano, Mount Acidophilus erupted violently. We thought Sherman was upset at us, so we started making sacrifices every day. We tried everything. Fish, poultry, livestock, phenylalanine. The usual. Then one day, we tried Bree. There was a huge eruption that nearly killed us all. What happened? Sherman is lactose intolerant. Ah, uh, it all makes sense now. Now, Sherman is on a very strict diet. He only gets fresh fruit, vegetables, and of course, soy products for the protein so important to muscle building. Nice village you have. Thanks. It's not much, but we call it home. We've been doing our best to capture the classic charm of a headhunter village, while at the same time incorporating all the modern conveniences brought to us by the European explorers. You may have noticed our first state-of-the-art bloodletting clinic, which has been cleverly designed to look like a traditional shaman's hut. How quaint. Yes, we think so. Do you live in fear of the fruit fly menace? Not since I switched to a malathion-based cologne. Very alluring. Thank you. Stand aside. I mean to visit the volcano. I'm afraid I cannot allow that. Our ritual offering is about to begin. Terrific. I'm fascinated by your quaint tribal customs. Postcards and slides are available in the lobby. Non-cannibals are forbidden from witnessing the actual ceremony. That's so unfair. Tell it to the volcano gods. I don't make the rules, you know. When does the ceremony begin? It was supposed to have started half an hour ago. Even now, members of my village are preparing a human-like sacrifice for the volcano god. Human-like? 
Due to the delicate nature of the volcano god's digestion, we can't actually feed him real humans. So we sacrifice a human substitute. It doesn't really taste like a human, but it has a similar texture. So what's the holdup? We're still waiting for our featured guest. Who's your featured guest? He's an ambassador from one of the other islands. It's all part of a new cannibal outreach program between the villages. Apparently not all villages are as punctual as ours. Uh, I'll help you find him. What does he look like? I don't know. He should be dressed for the ceremony. And he'd better be a vegetarian. We specifically asked for a vegetarian. Do they hassle you when you go through customs? You have no idea. Gotta run. Bye. Idol of Ricky, the helpful god of finger bowls. It's a statue of Myron, god of parsley and other garnishes. It's a large cube of tofu. It's a statue of Myron, god of parsley and other garnishes. It's a statue of Eunice. Aardvark headed goddess of the brown and served dinner roll. Boy, it's windy up here. It concentrates the light into a beacon for wayward vessels. Makes a man proud. But luckily, I don't need to adjust it. This is where the lighthouse light would go, if it had one. With all these broken windows, it's no wonder the light blew out. It's broken. I don't have anything to replace it with. Sure are bright. Hey, a stump. Mm, no. It's empty. Putting an empty jar on that stump won't do anything. I don't want to close it yet. Putting an empty measuring cup there won't do anything. I can't carry water in my hands. I bet it's really salty. Uh, Haggis? Aye. Join me or I'll kill you all. Of course you will, laddie. By the way, have you got any duct tape, laddie? We're reattaching the mainsail. Um, no. That's a shame. I guess we'll have to use nails then. Are you sure you don't want to be pirates again? Sorry, lad. Oh, shoot. You mutineers at best beware. Beware of what? Well, for one thing, you'll be driven to madness by the shame of your own guilt. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be just fine, lad. Just fine. I do this all the time. You mutineers at best beware. Beware of what? Well, for one thing, the sea hates a deserter, and she'll swallow you up. No, lad. The sea hates phone solicitors that call at mealtimes. 
It'll be the Alps what hates a disaster. Oh, shucks. I always get those two confused. What did you want in exchange for the lotion? We need to seal the hull of the ship, but we're out of tar. If you can find a substitute for tar, I'll let you have the lotion. You mutineers had best beware. Beware of what? Well, for one thing, if I wore a kilt, I wouldn't wear highly polished shoes. Ugh, by me great Aunt Fergus. You be right, laddie. I had best beware. I'll let you get back to work. It's a large cube of tofu. Nah. It's the leader of the cannibals. Nice village you have. Thanks. I really want to see the volcano. You're just not a cannibal, and your presence would defile the sanctity of our ceremony. Oh, can't you make an exception just this once? It's an emergency! I'd like to, but if I let you in, then I'd have to let everybody in. Next thing you know, cannibalism is in, and they're making documentaries about us. I bring a gift for the volcano god. Oh, we can't take gifts from outsiders. Government regulations, health codes, taboos, that sort of thing. I'll send him your regards, though. I'm thinking of becoming a cannibal. Do you have any previous experience? Well, I used to bite my fingernails. Hmm. Well, technically, I'm not supposed to do this. But I like you. You got moxie. After the sacrifice, I'll get you started on your cannibalism orientation program. In just four short years, you'll be able to join us in the volcano ritual. Four years? Uh, wait a second. Did I say cannibal? I, I meant to say, uh, cannonball. I want to be a cannonball. Boom! You're not quite stable, are you? What does your guest look like again? I've never seen him, but he should be dressed for the ceremony. I'll, uh, see you around. up first. I don't want to put my hand in there. That looks like a mask. Ick. Finally, you're here. Come on, we're late for the sacrifice. God of the volcano who resides in Mount Acidopolis, accept this sacrifice we make unto you. In the form of flesh with high amounts of fiber and wholesome cellulose, free of all fat and trans fatty acids, so that it might nourish you and bring your favor upon our humble village. 
and not upset nor agitate your ulcerative caldera. Okay, boys, toss them in. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you, and good night. Bubbly. Hail, hail, the god of the volcano. I'd lose my hand in that. It's the leader of the cannibals. You feed the volcano mannequins made from vegetables? Yes, we do. Sherman isn't a strict vegetarian, but fatty foods can cause him severe indigestion. Nice day for a sacrifice. Only one a day. Sherman is sensitive to overfeeding. My mask of tofu won't do anything here. If I take this off now, the cannibals may eat me on general principles. I can't use the skeleton arm with that. Hmm. You fool! You've given cheese to a lactose intolerant volcano god. Do you know what that means? You brought about the coming of the divine dysentery. Run for your lives! <laughs> Wow, that was more spectacular than I'd hoped. I'm not going back up there. It's too dangerous. The lava has really heated up the barbecue. It's a big, heavy-looking cast iron cooking pot. The volcano has erupted! Yes, I know. The Good Soup Empire is saved. Ah, oh, this is the happiest day of my life. Next to the day Grandpa invented the steak crispy and soup oyster cracker. Well, I'm happy for you. Soon the resort will be flooded with tourists coming to see the volcano. And I can finally put on the show I was working on the last time we had guests. What show is that? Voulez-vous, Vichyssoise? A dramatic musical about a talented young Parisian soup chef who is cruelly taken down by the Paris culinary establishment for her revolutionary ideas about soup preparation. I'm sure it'll be a big hit. I'd like a drink, please. Sure. What will you have? Give me a big fruity drink with an umbrella in it. Good choice. It's a delicious taste of the islands, made with lemon, grapefruit, and ground beef. Hey, don't I get one of those decorative umbrellas to go on my tropical drink? Um, I don't think we have any. No, I'm wrong. I do have this one.
neat. Ah, Papa Pichu, here's your glass back. Baron C. Lambert Chowder Good Soup, pioneer of crouton technology. He looks a lot like the guy at the bar. It's nailed to the wall. Although it's hauntingly realistic, I don't think it'll talk back. It's a big nail. I'd better get rid of this incriminating picture frame. What? That won't fit. This is one ugly picture. Looks just like the bartender. There, I've cut out the face. You just stole that mirror, didn't you? No, I didn't. It's right there, look. Hmm, I guess you're right. Oh dear, I'm starting to look old. From all that drinking. Mind your own business. How about giving me one more tarot reading? This is evil work, Guybrush. The fates have conspired against you, and no man can interfere. Your path has been determined. Okay, I get your point. I really do. Just one more time for Guybrush. <gasps> Let me guess. Death? Leave this place. Huh? You are putting us all in grave danger. Your very presence will bring us nothing but sickness, tragedy, and death. Oh, yeah? Well... Demon! Demon! Madam Zima, I... Be gone. You will bring death to all who surround you. No good can come of this. Five death cards? I think I'm getting the hint. Look! A three-headed monkey! Ah! Then the prophecies were true! Where? I don't see anything. They must have run away. This is a very bad omen. The future is in my hands. That fork is stuck in all that congealed cheese. Can I have some fresh nachos? You could. Except that the nacho maker has been broken for years. I would have gotten rid of the darn thing long ago, but I can't budge it. That congealed nacho cheese is tougher than pitch. It seeped through the broken glass and glued the machine to the bar. Thanks anyway. Hmm.
It's a big, heavy-looking cast iron cooking pot. That melted cheese looks just like yellow tar. Come to think of it, I don't want any fresh nacho cheese. I guess I'll just drag this down to Haggis now. Beer, Haggis! This stuff should work to patch up the ship. Aye, laddie, indeed it should. The consistency of tar, but with a tangy pepper taste. So, can I have your lotion now? Aye, lad, go ahead and take it. Don't eat the lotion. It's Haggis's melted nacho cheese. It was enough work getting it here. And I still don't want to eat it. It says, made with 100% pure lamb blubber. Mmm, soothing and nutritious. Tastes like chicken. Let's see if this slippery, greasy lotion does the trick. That should do it. The cursed ring exploded. It's Elaine's finger, ready for a new ring. No. Have you found her, you cadaverous canine? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nope. Nope. She's not on Plunder Island, Captain LeChuck. <laughs> then scour the seas, you ossified rats! Hunt them down, then bring them to me. Find me Guybrush Threepwood. It's with him that you'll find Elaine. Burn down every island in the Caribbean if you have to. But bring me my bride! And more slaw! Curse those villains! They never give you enough slaw with these bagu meals! There's a barrel at the top of the windmill. They're spinning around the top of the windmill. I can't hold on with my bare hands. It's a Cervantes brand umbrella. Very stylish. It's full of fermenting sugar water used for making rum. Mm, no. It's full of sugar water now. I need to use the jar with something else. I'm not really in the mood for a jar full of half fermented sugar water. It's full of yummy, delicious sugar water. Mm, bet that water sure tastes good. It's full of fireflies. 
Glow, tiny friends, glow! The fireflies will escape! They're trapped inside and glowing like mad. It's full of glowing fireflies. All the fireflies have suffocated. I need to use the jar with something else. There's no light. I haven't chugged a jar full of dead fireflies since college. holes in it. It's a jar lid with lots of holes poked in it. They're trapped inside and glowing like mad. It's full of glowing fireflies. Glow, tiny friends, glow! Perfect! The light is on, but there's no mirror to reflect the light. It's me! The lighthouse is working now. It's working perfectly. Those advertisements were no lie. It really is crystal clear. I really don't want to go in the ocean. Intimidating. Who are you? I... I am the lost Welshman. Ooh. I am the ferryman between here and Skull Island. Trapped for so very long in the icy ocean mists. Oh, how I hate that blasted mist. Really? I like mist. I think it's pretty. Well, sure, mist is pretty. But egad, is it dull. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. I will risk these rough waters no more. For too long have I rocked in that watery cradle of death. Freaky imagery. Whatever. Anyway, I'm not going out there again until I'm sure I can make it there safely. I need a compass. How will being able to draw perfect circles get you out to Skull Island? Not that kind of compass. The directional kind. If you find me one, I'll take you to Skull Island. I can only make out page 243. A compass is a magnetized bit of metal floating in a solution. This pie pan won't do any good there. It's full of seawater. It's a voodoo pen. I don't want to poke myself with a pin. The pin just sinks. I need to make it float. It's a corked bottle of shaving soap. I can't pull the cork out with my hands. Nice cork. 
I need to use the cork with something else. Okay. It's a cork with a pin stuck in it. Okay, it floats, but it still doesn't point anywhere. It's a big whoop souvenir magnet. Cool, a cork with a magnetic pin stuck in it. The mind boggles at the possibilities. Hey, neat, it points north. Science is fun when you know the secret. Well, I admit I had my doubts at first, but it looks really nice all put together. Here, take this compass. This is a compass. Will it work? Of course. See how it points north? Wow, that's incredible. How'd you do that? That was nothing. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. All right, let's go. bravest of men must dread the horror of this place. Steal your courage, boy, now, before you gaze upon the terrible, horrible face of Skull Island. That's a duck. What are you talking about? Don't you see the skull? This island doesn't look like a skull at all. It looks like a great, big, enormous duck. It should be called Duck Island. Well, you see, you, you gotta squint and sort of turn your head and... Ooh, it's just so scary. If you squint and turn your head, it looks like a bunny. Well, anyway, see that light up there on the cliff face? That's Smuggler's Cave. It's run by King Andre, the greatest smuggler in the world. And his nefarious assistant, the Cruff. But how do I get up there? You have to go to the top of the cliff. Won't you be coming with me? No, you must go alone. There will be someone there who will help you. But I warn you, beware of King Andre. He is as ruthless as he is bald. Good luck. Thanks. I bet he can help me find the smuggler's cave. There's a cave down there in the cliff face. I could never climb down there without falling. It's a hand-cranked elevator. Hello. Can you tell me how to find the evil smugglers of Skull Island? Beats me. Oh, wait a second. Uh, I, I think I remember something about that at the orientation seminar. Let me think. The cave is halfway down this sheer cliff face. Climb on board this dumbwaiter. I'll, I'll lower you down. It looks pretty rickety. Are you sure it's safe? No. Never used it before, but uh, I'm sure it can't be that dangerous. I'm a temp here. The, the usual elevator operator, uh, Ronbeard, uh, he's sick, so I'm filling in. Uh, I guess that'll be okay. What's your name? It's LaFoot. Would you lower me down to the smuggler's cave? Sure, sure, I can do that. You, you must weigh no more than, say, 20 pounds, right? Actually, more like 120. Oh. Well, it can't hurt to try, right? No, you're sure about this? Oh, yeah. You don't look that heavy at all. Hmm. Is that not tied securely? Here we go. Okay, give me a little bit more slack. Whoops! Okay, that's too much slack. Ah!
yes? Let's try that lowering me down the cliff thing again. All right. <laughs> I, I think I'm getting better at this. Please be careful this time. No problem. Here we go. I got it. I got it. I don't got it. Yes? Do you think you'll be able to lower me down this time? All right. I, I think I'm getting better at this. Here we go. Whoops! How oh, cool! It looks like a giant flying snail. Yes? Just try lowering me one more time. Alright. I, I think I'm getting better at this. Here we go! Hi there, neighbor. Got any diamonds? Wouldn't you know, but I'm fresh out. Go away. Darn. Let me try that again. Good afternoon. I'm the new Skull Island Diamond Inspector. I'm going to have to see every diamond you've got. Every last one. Come on, people. Chop, chop. I don't have all day. I do not like this man. Kill him. Darn. Let me try that again. I have got so much money, it's almost embarrassing. Well, hello. Let's talk, Mr. Uh... Threeport. Guybrush Threeport. Very well, Mr. Threeport. I am King Andre, and this is my associate, Gruff. Were you looking for something in particular? The Good Soup Family Diamond. LeChuck stole it, you bought it, I want it. Now. <sighs> Please? Sir? But we have so much quality merchandise here at the Pirates Club. Our prices get lower every day. Everything a pirate or pirate in trading could possibly want is here for the right price. <laughs> I don't get it. The Good Soup Diamond is the centerpiece of my collection. The fantastic energy flowing through it is the key to all my power. So, can I have it? Of course you can't have it. Unless you were to give me something in return. Your evil plan will never work, Andre. But it is flawless. A carefully placed series of charges laid throughout Blood Island. All controlled by a network of satellites in geosynchronous orbit. And only one man has access to the master switch. Oh, boss. I am that man, Threeport, and... Boss? Yes, Mr. Croft. Ixnay on the evil lamp play? Ah, yes, of course. You're a madman. Am I mad? Am I? 
Is it madness to sit in a cave at the top of a deserted island, accumulating vast amounts of gold and jewels and stuffed animals, stockpiling plunder from across the Caribbean and passing the savings on to you? Is that madness or genius? Good point. I take it back. I'm not crazy. My prices are. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Threepwood. I expect you to buy. Maybe I'll just take a look around. Even packed into confined spaces, they're still adorable. It's adorable and functional. It's not that adorable. Not exactly the kind of guy I expected to find living in a cave surrounded by heaping mounds of treasure. I think he could take me. What are you looking at? Uh, nothing, sir. I think that would be a very bad idea. Smuggling by candlelight. Very romantic. Hey, Dirt. I hope you're prepared to pay for that. Never mind. He's guarding the treasure. Adorable. They're stacked like adorable, fluffy cordwood. Eerie. Keep that door closed. Sorry, I, I just wanted to make sure Mr. Threepwood made it down all right. Now there's a lot of treasure. It's a solid gold picture frame. Cool, I may actually get to use a real weapon. Hands off. I was just looking. Regal. Hands off. I was just looking. Chesty. I have no idea what that is, but it sure looks expensive. I hope you're prepared to pay for that. Never mind. He's not much of a talker. I couldn't help noticing those adorable smuggle bunnies. Ah, the smuggle bunnies. One of our most popular items. Each one comes with a cleverly hidden pouch just above this small intestine. Great, I'll take one. None of them contains the diamond. Oh, never mind. I'd like to buy something really piratey. Of course. Really piratey things are, of course, our specialty. Can I interest you in a peg leg? Well, that depends on what you do with it. That was a joke. Ah, yes. I don't quite follow you, but I'm sure it was amusing. How about toys? Do you have any toys? As a matter of fact, a new shipment just arrived yesterday. They're sure to be bestsellers. Here, take one. Ahoy there, matey. You're the best shipmate ever. Let's build a sand castle. I'll be haunting ye into the hereafter. I really had my heart set on that diamond. As you wish. You are a formidable opponent, Mr. Threepwood. But it looks as if our game of cat and mouse must cease. It is a perfect diamond, one of the largest I've ever seen. I'll take it. And so it comes with a very large price. Eh, enough with the hard sell. How much? It will cost you an awful lot of money. Do you have that much? Um, no. How much you got? Well, let me think. Uh, the cash on me, my mutual fund, carry the two... Very little. As I thought. But perhaps we can make a deal. My partner and I are very fond of cards, uh, poker in particular. 
How about a little wager? If you can defeat us at poker, you win the diamond. Sounds fair. Yes, fair. <laughs> Could you stop laughing like that? It's very unnerving. So, Mr. Threepwood, the question is to you. Care to join us in a game of cards? Sounds fun. Deal me in, Baldy. You will have to pay to enter the game. Well, how much do I need? Not very much. I don't have any money. Then you can't play. What if by some unfortunate turn of luck, you happen to lose? We would have nothing to gain. It's a good thing I'm not afraid of heights. Oh, I don't feel so good. I can't use the umbrella with that. Mm, no. I still say it looks like a duck. Excuse me. I'd like to go back to Blood Island. Me too. This place gives me the creeps. How's business? Oh, it's just wonderful. Now that the volcano's erupting again, the reservations are just pouring in. I'd like a drink, please. Right. I've got five death cards. That can't be good. Head be clear for clearing foggy heads. Darn childproof caps. I can't open it. That opened it. That makes the drink oh so much more appealing. It looks dangerous. It just occurred to me that mixing medicine and alcohol is a really stupid and possibly lethal thing to do. If I were a real person instead of a lovably inept cartoon character with the potential for a few more sequels, I wouldn't even consider it. Skull. <laughs> That's odd. It's supposed to cause drowsiness. I don't feel the least bit drowsy. In fact, I, uh... In fact, I feel, uh... <laughs> to 
Then the undertaker says, I wanted to be a pallbearer, but I couldn't stop coughing. Oh, 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 you crack me up, Mort. So what's with the new guy? Oh, he's been like that for an hour now. Passed out cold. He'll come around. I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Hmm. I guess that's the end of the game, then. What with him being the main character and all? Funny. I didn't think you could die in LucasArts Adventure Games. Well, maybe they're trying something different. When I should take care of him? Would you? It's bad for business, having him just lie there. Rest in peace and all that. dead? Oh, come on, cut it out. It sure is dark. It won't open. I'm trapped. Help! Open sesame! Darn. Yikes. Where's that telltale pounding coming from? It's coming from within one of these coffins. From the dead. Dead that surround me. They must know my horrible secret. They'll never let me rest until I've paid for the wrongs I've committed against. Wait a second. I don't have a horrible secret. I don't want to know what happened here. Mm, no. I wonder where their bodies are. Creepy skull. That's not a talking skull. Nah. It's locked. It leads out to the cemetery. Lots of coffins in here. I think that knocking is coming from inside this coffin. I can't open it. Go into the light! I'm glad to be finally out of that thing, even though it was a spacious, comfortable model with plenty of leg and headroom. Well, hello there. Say, you look familiar. Uh, yes, well, uh... Of course, Guybrush Threepwood. You're the one who locked me in there in the first place. Well, you see, I've been meaning to... No, no, I won't hear of it. That was the best time of my life. Gave me plenty of time to think, you know? To think about the things that really matter. I don't know if you've considered this, son, but live burials are not an altogether uncommon experience here in the Caribbean. I wasn't aware of that. Not to mention pirate raids and deadly sea battles, huge man-eating reptiles, dangerous quicksand pits, trigger-happy duelists, and of course, those pesky undead. Have you ever thought of what would happen to your loved ones should this gruesome fate befall you? No, but... but... Well, of course, you have plenty of time to think about it. Or do you? I'm one of the lucky ones. I've been dead. It's given me a whole new perspective on life. A life that I'm going to devote to making sure people's life insurance needs are met. Here, take one of my business cards I've had made up. 
If you've been locked in that coffin, how are you able to have business cards made? Now's not the time to worry about the technicalities, son. Now's the time to ask yourself, are you covered? Run along now and let me set up my office. Mm -hmm. We're trapped in here. The door's locked. Nonsense. This is one of Stan's cozy crypts, all equipped with a patented secure lock release mechanism. Just jiggle the handle there. Mutual of Stan, because you could die horribly at any moment. It's even laminated. There's someone in there. I uh, just got buried alive, and I was... I feel I should remind you that as a government employee, I cannot be held liable for accidental live burials. But why was I buried in that particular crypt? The only other crypt is the Good Soup Family Crypt. It's only for the Good Soup Family. They don't want just any commoner spending eternity with them. Stand. Hi, guys. I guess you'll be wondering how I came to be back from the dead. No questions for the dead guy come back to life? No questions like, is there life after death or is there a heaven? Will there be adequate parking? Fine, be that way. I wouldn't tell you about the hereafter if you begged me. I thought if I died, I'd be buried with your aunt. Well, isn't it obvious? You can't be buried in the Good Soup Family Crypt unless you're a member of the Good Soup Family. A member of the family, huh? Uncle Griswold, it's me! Don't you recognize me? Recognize you? I've never seen you before in my life. What is your name? Hearty Beef and Potato. Hearty Beef and Potato? I come from good Irish stock. Hmm. I don't recall having any relatives with that name. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? No, you don't look much like a good soup at all. In fact, you look more like one of the broth's child. They always did have weak features. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. Every day I wander the good soup family hall of portraits and give my respects to each of my distinguished ancestors. Every distinguishing feature of the Good Soup family is there in those pictures, and I see nothing in any of those portraits that might remind me of you. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. It's Count Gaspacho Good Soup, the cold-hearted canning magnet. Peter and Victoria Soie Good Soup. Marquis and Marquess of Consommé. It's locked. I've already read it. I guess I'm better at this pirating thing than I thought. It worked!
It's a really musty smelling wardrobe. It's so musty that I don't want to open it up. Quaint. I'm sure there's nothing in there except one of those hotel Bibles. It looks out over the cemetery. Creepy. It won't open. Ugh, it's an old-fashioned water carafe. It's made from porcelain. It's a Murphy bed. Wow. I'll bet his room charges are pretty hefty by now. The Murphy bed is slammed up so many times it's made a hole in the wall. Looks comfortable. The Good Soups, A Life in Pictures by M.M. Good Soup. I can't reach it. Not enough leverage. Minerva Stroheim Good Soup. Baroness of Borscht. It's a door with a porthole in it for that nautical accent. I can see the hallway. It's a good soup family portrait, but I've cut out the face. Ah, oh, there's nothing like family. No matter what may happen in the topsy-turvy world of the Caribbean resort business, I can always relax in the knowledge that I come from good, wealthy stock. Breeding. That's what's important. Breeding and culture, just like Grandfather Lambert. Breeding, culture, and lots and lots of really old. Money. Mm, it makes a man proud. It's funny. I don't remember Grandfather Lambert as looking so, so common. Oh, weird. It's like his eyes follow me. Pictures like that really creep me out. Look at me. Don't I look just like a good soup? Now that you mention it, you do bear a slight resemblance to my great-grandfather, C. Lambert Good Soup. Clammy? My folks back home used to tell me all the time. You're the spitting image of old chowder good soup. You know, I think you're right. Ah, uh, I wonder why I didn't see it before. I could just talk about good soup history all day. Well, this is a wonderful chance for us to catch up on old times, what? Remember when our family first sailed onto Blood Island? Do I? I still get goosebumps at the thought of it. Ah, yes. When was that again? Uh, 14... 8... 7... 33? 1433? Two? No. I can't believe someone of the Good Soup bloodline could be so ignorant of our family's heritage. I could just talk about Good Soup history all day. 
I am still not convinced. Every good soup is well read on our noble family history. If you knew anything about our family, I might believe you. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Madam Zima, I... Be gone! Madam Eczema. I can't quite figure out what's odd about this poster. I'd like a drink, please. Coming right up. This guy's dead again? No, he's just faking it. No, I'm pretty sure it's the real thing this time. Well, if you say so. He's an awfully fragile little fella, isn't he? I'll take care of him. Well, hello. What a surprise you're dropping in like this. Now you see, this is exactly what I was talking about. Perhaps I can interest you in some life insurance? The coffin lid desk is a nice touch. You've convinced me. I want to buy some insurance. A wise choice, and one you won't soon regret. The question isn't whether or not you can afford to buy an insurance policy. It's whether you can afford not to. Speaking of which, can you afford to buy an insurance policy? Well, how much does it cost? Oh, that depends on a variety of factors. How much coverage you need, how much you're willing to spend, all sorts of highly complicated sliding scale insurance equations and such. But I won't bore you with all that. Just let me ask you this. How much money do you have? Well, I've got these wooden nickels. I see. Maybe I've confused you somewhere along the line. While nothing would please me more to send you out of here, with the peace of mind that your family will be provided for in the unlikely event of your death, I have to run a business here. If you can't at least show me some collateral, I can't give you a policy. How about an enormous, uncursed diamond? How about that? Do you have an enormous, uncursed diamond? Okay, no. But I'm like this close to getting one. Well, I'm this close to believing that you're trying to take advantage of my generosity. Maybe you'd like to make me a serious offer, hmm? This antique handcrafted bottle of rich, creamy shaving soap. The closest, most comfortable shave possible. Not interested. This one-of-a-kind Big Whoop refrigerator magnet. Very collectible. I don't think so. This fine cane-handled umbrella. Makes a great gift. No. This attractive mallet and chisel combination set. Use them separately or as a pair. I don't think so. An assortment of tarot cards. Practice the mystic art of fortune telling at home or on vacation. I don't think so. This highly accurate map to Blood Island. I absolutely guarantee you won't find another one just like it. I don't think so. This authentic pirate relic. A genuine tooth from an actual pirate. Only one of its kind. Is that real gold? The finest known to man. Not much spit on it either anymore. Now you're starting to speak my language. All right, let's find a coverage plan that suits your needs. And you can rest assured that you provided for your family well after your unfortunate departure. What are the terms of this plan exactly? It's quite simple, son. When you die, whoever holds that policy gets a lot of money. A lot of money? Wow. Wow is right. Now I want you to be careful out there. Okay, I will. Thanks. 
No, I'm serious. I want you to be very, very careful. Will do. This entitles the bearer of this document to the sum of... a lot of money. On the event of the demise of... Hardy Beef and Potato Good Soup. I've already tried reading it, and I still can't understand it. What is it about these things that makes them so popular in office settings? Is that the photo that came with the frame? No, that's my wife. Man, I wish people would stop with that. Mm, no. A sure sign of a fine, classy business establishment. Ooh, spooky. No thanks, I don't want any more to do with it. Now these are high-grade nails. I'm cashing in this insurance policy. Give me a lot of money. But this is a life insurance policy. You collect when the policyholder dies. No, honest. I was dead for a really long time. And you just got better? Well, yes. Do you have any proof of this miracle? As a matter of fact, smart guy. No. Then it appears that you're just wasting my time. Run along and play now. I'm trying to run a business here. It's a water cooler. Pirates don't drink purified water. It's from the Caribbean Correspondence Institute. Seeing those guys lit up never fails to bring a smile to my face. Hey, what an amazing story I have to tell. I was dead, but I live again. Who wants to hear about it? Eh, you guys don't deserve to hear a good story. Tell me that whole ring story again. My dead great aunt's fiance stole the diamond and sold it to smugglers on Skull Island. She wore the engagement band until the day she died, and she remains buried in the Good Soup family crypt, dead of a broken heart. I'm off to explore the rustic charms of Blood Island. Now these are high-grade nails. I'm not sure if that's strong enough to hold it. I might need one more nail. It's a heavy-duty picture-hanging nail. The bed has been nailed down. 
That ought to do it. The Good Soups, A Life in Pictures by M.M. Good Soup. Those nails are in there tough. This won't give me enough leverage to pry those boards off. It's full of all the dates and fun facts you'd ever want to know about the Good Soup family. And it says I'll receive a new book every month, or cancel with no obligation. And keep my copy of Buccaneers and Bouillabaisse Bays as a free gift. I could just talk about Good Soup history all day. How about that first fateful journey made to the Caribbean? Oh, you mean the one that... Baron Salmon Bisque de Good Soup began in 1621? Exactly. He landed on Scab Island with just a spoon and a dream. In just four short years, he had formed the largest chain of all soup restaurants in the Western Hemisphere. By 1635, he had driven the entire Van Salad family out of the Caribbean and had a restaurant empire that spanned the globe. Actually, the Van Salads were not driven out until 1637 and the Good Soup chain of restaurants and resorts never did become popular in the South Pacific. Yes, we are. All right, whatever. Well, son, it looks like you were right. Welcome back to the glorious name of Good Soup. I'm, uh, honored. And as a Good Soup, you're welcome to every benefit the name provides. Instant prestige around Blood Island. A 10% discount at any of the Good Soup resorts in the Caribbean. And, of course, medical, dental, and a 401k. And the best thing of all, if you should happen to drop dead, you will be buried in the extravagant Good Soup family crypt. It's as if all my dreams have come true. I'd like a drink, please. Here you go, lady. <laughs> oh dear, he's had a sudden and completely unexpected relapse of death. <sighs> And just as we were getting reacquainted, as his kinsman, it is my duty to give him a proper burial. It is my solemn vow. Young, hearty beef and potato shall be buried in the Good Soup family crypt. All right. It goes out to the cemetery. It's locked. There's no way out. Ominous. I had a hard enough time getting out of it. Hey, there's a hole in the ceiling of this crypt. I think I might be able to squeeze through. Wow, it's a tunnel that opens on a deep, dark forest. It looks familiar somehow. As if I've seen it in a dream. Or maybe it's, I don't know. Great jumping monkeys! A terrifying horde of stunningly rendered rabbit jaguars. They're coming right at me. Whew, it's a good thing I couldn't get through that hole. I'd be done for. It's a memorial plaque for Mini Stroni Good Soup. Yikes. It 
It's a ghost in a bride's gown. She looks very sad and lonely. <clears throat> oh, hello there. Hey, nice ring. <laughs> Was it something I said? I hate this ring. It's been passed down from mother to daughter in the Good Soup family for generations. It was to be my wedding ring until that evil pirate stole the diamond and left me. Left me here to die of a broken heart. Who are you and what are you doing here? I am Minnie Good Soup, last in a long line of eligible Good Soup debutantes. I was buried here exactly one week after my wedding day. A wedding day that never came. What happened? I was the belle of Blood Island. How many people can claim that? Oh, how the lads adored me. I was courted by the richest, most handsome men in the Caribbean. But all my suitors bored me to tears. I wanted someone dangerous. I wanted a pirate. By the way, what do you do for a living? Flooring inspector. Oh. Then one day, a real pirate sailed his ship into the bay. I fell for him instantly, and we became engaged. But he left me standing at the altar, and I died of a broken heart. Wow. That bites. Oh, I know. Where's the diamond for your ring? It's gone. He took it. Who took it? My love, my honey cakes, my widow schnoobums, my LeChuck. LeChuck is your schnoobums? He pried the diamond from its satin during the rehearsal dinner. Oh, what a fool I was. He told me he was taking it out to get some fresh air. Since you're, uh, not using it, can I have your engagement band? This ring will remain on my finger until I have a wedding band to replace it. Where did the Chuck take the diamond? Cad! The fiend! He sold it to the smugglers of Skull Island. It's just so humiliating. I could just die. Go into the light. If only it were that easy. I'm afraid I can never leave this crypt until I marry. Are you attached? You bet. What a shame. You sure have pretty eyes. Oh. Were there any other suitors you found attractive? You mean, besides LeChuck? Well, <laughs> there was one I could have fallen for. Young Charles de Goulash. He had such a radiant smile. What happened to him? You know, it's funny. I don't know. He checked into the hotel one night and I never saw him again. How do I get out of this crypt? There's no way out of this crypt for either of us. I must haunt this lonely tomb until I've married a man I truly love. And you can't leave because the door's locked. This is just a shade too creepy for me. I'm leaving. Good soup is food. <laughs> it's a universal crowbar. This is going to be so cool. Die! Oh, I'm not going to do that again. 
I think I broke my skull. I'm all skull. It's your own fault. Stop scaring me like that. So I did scare you? Really? Well, startled is more like it. Oh. B but startled in a terrified kind of way. You really are very, very scary. Don't talk down to me. I really don't have any choice. I saw you get out of that crypt. Does this mean that you're dead? No, I was only faking. Darn. I thought together we could walk among the living and spawn a new wave of terror throughout the Caribbean. So what you're saying is that you only love me for my legs. Something like that. I need to use the crowbar with something else. It's Murray. Hi, Murray. Oh, it hurts. That must be the grave digger. Hey, mister, help! What? Who's there? Who said that? Who's scaring poor old Mort, the grave digger? There's been a horrifying mistake. I've been buried alive in the Good Soup family crypt. All right. This joke has gone far enough. You kids should be ashamed of yourselves. It's no joke. I'm really trapped in here. Crazy kids with your long hair and your Baroque music? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. This isn't a trick. I'm really trapped in this crypt. I drank a special potion that put me into a coma. Thinking I was dead, they buried me in this crypt. Yeah, right. They did that in the book. Never trade lunches with a corpse. If you kids ever came up with an original idea, I might believe you. Just come and look at me through this crack. Oh, sure. I turn my back to the door and you thieving little hoodlums will sneak up from behind and tie me up. I read all about your sinister ways in my horror novels, so nothing doing. Curses, you've seen through my web of deceit. I'm no ordinary man trapped in a crypt. Well, what are you then? My faster-than-light ship is trapped in a subspace anomaly. You have no ship. Any true warp traveler would know that reversing the polarity of the ion flux field would result in a tachyon expansion wave, creating a trail of neutrinos that could be followed out of the anomaly. What I meant to say was... I seek the golden rods of Cathan to bring peace to the Shire. Do you bear the mark of Tixplik, the chosen one foretold by the scrolls of the Third Shadow? I was hoping you wouldn't ask. What I meant to say was... I'm an angry and deranged ghost haunting this crypt. Then let me see you appear before me. Excuse me? If you were a real spirit, you could materialize in a ghostly form. It's all in the books. Well, let's see it. Isn't the ominous sound of my disembodied voice proof enough? I guess not. You must love horror stories to own all these collectibles. Reading fantastic stories about the dead helps me keep my mind off my work. Why are you wasting your money on all this bad fiction? At least my bad fiction doesn't require over a thousand dollars in hardware. I see your point. I'm gonna go sulk in the darkness now. Have a good time. It looks like he's writing a horror novel. It's called The Grog That Drank People, part one of a three-book cycle. I wonder why trashy media always comes in threes. Looks like a Halloween mask. It's a bunch of cheesy horror stories. It's the poster for some really trashy monster book. Trust me, it'll never sell. It's a poster for Suckers 12, The Beaking. Spooky. It's a dinosaur from the monsters that time couldn't care less about. It's a poster for some dumb book about undead pirates. Cloying, yet grisly at the same time. It's the stuff that really boring dreams are made of. It's either a dead parrot or a very strange bat. Nah. Oh dear. 
What a bore. It's hard to see what it is from where I'm standing. Judging by the beard, I'm guessing it's a goat. It's me again. The guy who isn't trapped in the Good Soup family crypt. What do you want? Let me out of this crypt! I'm not falling for your tricks this time. Just leave me alone and let me read my horror novels. Just come and look at me through this crack. No way, Buster. <laughs> Fear me. I'm an evil ghost. Then go ahead. Show your ghastly visage. I can't. I'm shy. You're no ghost. I'm going to haunt you until you set me free. Then go ahead. Show your ghastly visage. Not right now. You're no ghost. I'm gonna go sulk in the darkness now. It's a glowing lantern. I can't reach. Hi, Murray. Oh, it hurts. Hey! He just can't stop jammering. Hey, watch the hands! I don't want to get caught up in a conversation with Murray right now. circulation is cut off. You're going to have to cut off my hand. No, no, just kidding. I can't reach. Well, that can reach the lantern, but it won't grab hold. It's a bottle of paste. It's a skeleton arm with paste all over it. I've got it. Hey, what happened to the light? It's a glowing lantern. It feels warm. My shadow is being cast on that back wall. Hey, Murray, be fearsome. Okay. I am one of the living dead. Fear me. Release me. Hey! Look at me! I'm a ghost here! That's just pathetic. Hmm. It's a glowing lantern. Murray, do your stuff. Okay. from this wretched tomb. I must be set free, or I will haunt you forever. I will hide your keys beneath the cushions of your upholstered furniture. And never more will you be able to find socks that match. All right, hang on. I'm coming. Great work, Murray. I... I was terrifying, wasn't I? My demonic powers have made me omnipotent! <laughs> uh oh, looks like the lantern ran out of oil. There, 
gates open. Now shuffle off and give me peace. It's useless now that it's out of oil. Looks like minestrone, delicately seasoned with cobwebs and mouse knuckles. It's probably gotten cold. No, really, I couldn't. I'm full. Uh, hi. Hello again, handsome. What happened to that young man you liked so much? Why, the last time I saw Charles, he had checked into the hotel. I'll just check back in with you later. Well, Murray, are you ready to continue our heady adventuring? Murray? Where'd he go? Hi, guys. I've risen from the deepest recesses of the underworld. Your curiosity is overwhelming. This hereby certifies that hearty beef and potato good soup met his demise at least once on Blood Island. I wouldn't know what to say. Gross. The Murphy bed is slammed up so many times it's made a hole in the wall. I can see the good soup crypt from here. so long. Oh, Charles, it has. It has. You look so different. Really? Why, you look exactly the same. Oh, Charles, how you flatter me. Oh, but you must go now. But why? Now that I've found you again after all these years. What would our families say if they knew we were alone together on such a romantic night? Minnie, this may sound rash, but I... I love you, Minnie Good Soup. Oh, Charles, you mustn't. Oh, I can't help it. I've always loved you. Do you hear? I've always loved you, Minnie, and I always will. Come away with me now. Hello? Oh, but Charles, it just isn't done. Think of the scandal it would cause. To heck with the scandal, Minnie. Oh. 
marry me. Oh, yes, Charles, yes. A thousand times, yes. Then kiss me, my love. It looks like it's just about Elaine's size, but it needs a diamond to be complete. Tastefully done. Welcome back to Mutual of Stan. It's Stan. I'm cashing in this insurance policy. But this is a life insurance policy. You collect when the policyholder dies. I'm dead. I really am. Do you have any proof that you're dead? As a matter of fact, smart guy, I've got your proof right here. A death certificate. Well, this must be some kind of mistake. Uh-uh, it's right there in high-res black and white. I died. Give me a lot of money. Hmm. It looks like I'm left with no choice but to acquiesce. No, just give me my money. That's what I mean. Oh, thanks. This is a lot of money. <laughs> I'm liquid. Nah. Excuse me, but... Sorry, son. No time to chat. Every second I spend talking to you is a second taken away from my loyal customers. So I'm not a loyal customer? Frankly, no. You're a bit of a high risk. High risk? I'm young, don't smoke, and I run away screaming from any sort of life-threatening situation. And yet you still have this tendency to die and then reanimate and take my money. Well, there is that. I don't think he wants to talk to me anymore. I really don't want to go in the ocean. I'd like a ride out to Skull Island, please. All right, let's go. I still say it looks like a duck.
Okay, I'll play you for the diamond. You will have to pay to enter the game. Well, how much do I need? Not very much. Sure, I can handle that. This is a lot of money. I better only give them part of it. Have you ever played poker before, Mr. Threeport? No. Would you believe this is my very first time? <laughs> then I'll give you a brief explanation. The game is the simplest variety of five-card start. I deal five cards to each of us. We show our cards to each other, and the player with the best hand wins. Well, how do I know what makes the best hand? If you have any questions, just ask us. You do trust us, don't you? Of course I trust you. Very well. Let us begin. Come on, sevens. Take a moment to look at your cards. Two of spades, three of hearts, four of clubs, eight of clubs, and uh, king of diamonds. What a terrible hand. No matter how I arrange them, they're still terrible. Hmm. I've got a really terrible hand. Apparently, good fortune is not in the cards for you. <laughs> I thought we agreed you weren't going to laugh like that anymore. I have a full house. Aces over kings. You lose. Perhaps you should try again. You bet. I'm going to win that diamond. Put up your side of the wager, Mr. Threeport. Very well. Let us begin. Swing, dealer. Take a moment to look at your cards. Two of spades, three of hearts. Hey, wait a second. This is the exact same hand as I had last time. How's that even possible? Ah, that's an interesting turn of luck, Mr. Threeport. <laughs> Hmm. Nothing again. I have a royal flush. It seems as if you've lost again. Maybe your luck will improve. Perhaps you should try again. You bet. I'm going to win that diamond. Put up your side of the wager, Mr. Threepwood. Very well. Let us begin. Come on, sevens. Take a moment to look at your cards. These aren't even real playing cards. What game is this? I've got five death cards. That can't be good. Five of a kind. Right there. Not even you guys can beat five of a kind. You're correct, Mr. Threepwood. We cannot beat five of a kind. The question remains, however, whether or not you can beat a pair. A pair? A pair of murderous smugglers. Huh? Us, Mr. Threepwood. I am talking about us. We're gonna kill you. Oh, I get it. <laughs> whether or not you can beat a pair, that's pretty clever. Now, now, gentlemen. Let's not be too hasty. There's a delivery man out here with a package. You idiots! You blew out the lights! I got the diamond. Not for long, you little... Bolt! Hit him, not me, you cretin! Who are you calling a bull for? There he goes! Get him! Got what I need from the smugglers. Good. Let us leave this place of evil. There's just one thing I need to do first. Really? What's that? Who's there? Oh, it's just you. Wait, wait what are you doing? Help! Help! Good luck on the rest of your adventures, Guybrush. What? You can't mean... I'm afraid so. 
This work is too dangerous for me. I'm going to find a more stable, secure line of work. I hear there's still an opening for a chef on Scab Island. Well, you'll be sorely missed. I know, but my destiny lies out there, somewhere. Beyond the rolling waves. Farewell, good friend Welshman. Oh, wait. Where'd you say Scab Island was again? East by northeast. You can't miss it. Oh, thanks a bunch. Ah, whoops. I forgot to tell him that a magnetized pin will only have compass-like properties for a short time. Those advertisements were no lie. It really is crystal clear. I really don't want to go in the ocean. I really don't want to go in the ocean. I really don't want to. I really don't want. I really don't want. I really. 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 I hope it was worth it for you. Wow, it's huge! And not a curse on it. It's a massive diamond engagement ring. Are you all right? Guybrush? Where? Where are we? You're okay. We're on Blood Island. LeChuck's ring had a terrible curse on it, but I put everything right. You're safe and everything's gonna be fine. Just fine. Be well spoken, pet. But save your breath, lass. You'll be needing it for when you scream. I do. Where, where are we? Don't you be remembering this place, Freepwood? It was not long ago that I trapped you here to suffer tortures most foul. Wait, I can remember. I've seen this place before. It's some terrible nightmare. It was no mere nightmare, Guybrush. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Oh no, it can't be. But it is. This is the Carnival of the Damned. I, the Carnival of the Damned. You fiend, why have you brought us here? There be two reasons, you pathetic privateer. I'd be intended to torture and kill ye. And I'll be given Elaine a treasure. Ah, you're wasting your time, LeChuck. Elaine's love can't be bought. Ah, but this be a very special treasure. This be the fabled treasure of Big Whoop. Big Whoop? Aye, the very pirate treasure you were searching for before I caught up with you. What's so special about the treasure of Big Whoop? Isn't it just like any other pirate treasure? I see. Ye do not yet know the dreadful power that be Big Whoop. I guess not. Quake in fear, Threepwood, when I tell thee that Big Whoop be a damned portal to a demon netherworld. Okay. The treasures of Big Whoop be the very gates of hell themselves! Yay. But how will Big Whoop make Elaine love you? Elaine shall pass through the hoary gates of Big Whoop, just as I once did, down to the inky blackness of the infernal nether regions. For you see, Big Whoop gives those who pass through it the greatest gift of all, immortality. But at what cost? <laughs> 
cost. <laughs> Granted, people may find me a bit unapproachable now, and the smell does take a while to get used to, but it'd be worth everything now that I have the power to make Elaine love me. But if you kill Elaine, won't she hate you even more? Aye, at first. But soon she'll be understanding what a grand gift eternal life be. And besides, the dating pool will be surprisingly small when you're the living dead. She'll just have to give me another chance. Elaine will never marry you. She loves me. She does not. She loves me. Nuh-uh. She loves me. Does not. This whole amusement park, why? The Big Whoop Carnival was my most brilliant idea. Once I had the power of Big Whoop at my command, I could make Elaine mine at last. I see. But again, why an amusement park? I'll be getting to that. I knew Elaine would need a little coaxing, and that I'd be needing an army. A horrible army of the undead. Okay, but why an amusement park? Are you going to let me finish? I'm not talking just to hear myself talk, you know. You're right. I've been rude. Please, go on. Everyone knows that the life of a seaman is a long, hard, lonely one. Sailors spend months longing for just a few days leave. And you know what they're looking for as soon as they get into port. Yes? A family-oriented fun park! Oh, that. <laughs> of course. They come to take a ride on the giant roller coaster, the Great Monkey Mountain. They reach the top of the highest peak, and then hands in the air, screaming like monkeys. They plunge down the slope into a great stream of lava. That doesn't sound the least bit fun. Aye, it's not. In fact, it's downright unpleasant. But when they reach the other side, they're fitting warriors for my skeletal army of the damned. Anyway, Elaine really loves me. Does not. How did you find Big Whoop? That'd be a long story. Are you sure you want to hear it? Does the torture start after we're done talking here? Aye. Go on, then. Back when I were alive, Elaine despised me. No. No, 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 it's true. I can see that now. She didn't like me at all. But I were determined to prove me worth to her, you see. So, I set sail to find the legendary secret of Monkey Island. Been there, done that. Well, I did it first, you nefarious nudibranch. A few days after setting sail, my ship was caught in a terrible typhoon and was torn apart. I would have drowned, but some friendly sharks found me and set me ashore on Blood Island. There I was, marooned, with no hope of winning Elaine's heart. I thought me luck had run out, but one day a ship made port at Blood Island. Twas the ship of one Captain Marley. Elaine's own grandfather. I struck up a conversation with Rum Rogers Sr., first mate on the ship. And for the price of a few drinks, I learned that they had the map to the legendary treasure of Big Whoop. Although I had no ship and no money. Hold on. Does this go on for much longer? Although I had no ship and no money, I planned to beat Marley's crew to the treasure and take it for myself. I didn't have the money to buy a new ship, but I still had my greatest asset. The ability to kill bugs just by breathing? But I still had my greatest asset. That uh, indefinable Chuck charm. One of the rich young debutantes on Blood Island was helpless against it. After a week with me, she would have followed me to the grave. 
Unfortunately for her, she didn't get the chance. I pried the diamond from her family's engagement ring and sold it to some cutthroat smugglers for the cost of a new ship. All right, Lacha! Was she hot? Did you kiss her? Well, uh, I... Uh, <laughs> Oh, come on. You can tell me. I don't want to be talking about that. It'd be personal. And besides, dead men tell no tales. Oh, I was waiting for that one. With me new ship, I easily overtook Marley's crew and beat them to Big Whoop, which just so happened to be here on Monkey Island. What is the secret of Monkey Island? The secret of Monkey Island. I could tell you, but I'd rather make you guess. That a sequel can never be as good as the original? Lies! Filthy, dirty lies! No, it goes much deeper than that. It's an ancient secret, closely guarded uh, by the natives and uh, pirates who happen to... You don't even know the secret of Monkey Island, do you? No, not really. All right, then. Please don't kill me. Why shouldn't I? If you kill me... You'll ruin our reputation for making family-oriented games. We'll be scorned by parent watchdog groups everywhere. What'll you threaten me with next? Some ludicrous Senate subcommittee investigating violence in the media. Well, I'm shaking in my boots now. What happened to Captain Marley and his crew? Their ship arrived at Monkey Island a half hour after mine. But they were too late to stop me from claiming me prize. And they watched me pass through the port in the Big Whoop. Craven cowards that they were, the power of what they saw overwhelmed them. They fled the island in terror. Marley tore his treasure map into four pieces and gathered his crew around him. There was Rum Roger Sr., the first mate, Rap Scallion, the cook, and young Lindy, the cabin boy. Marley gave each a piece of the map, keeping one for himself. They promised to guard those map pieces with their lives. I saw to it that they kept their promise. They were the only people alive to know about Big Whoop. What happened to Rum Rogers Sr.? He was taking a bath in his cabin near Fat Island, drinking rum and eating toast, as he always did while bathing when the toaster mysteriously fell into the tub with him. Shocking. His son inherited the map piece, but was too much of a drunkard to understand its importance. <laughs> what happened to Rapt Scallion, the cook? Rapt Scallion died in a flash fire in his weenie hut on Scab Island. That's right. I brought him back to life with a voodoo spell. I remember it so vividly. Guybrush. Guybrush. Oh, I'm sorry, I was miles away. What were you saying? I knew about Rap's absent-minded tendency to leave his gas burners on. So I arranged for a fully lit cake to be delivered to him on his 35th birthday. Ha <laughs> ha! You can hear the explosion as far as Booty Island. That's horrible. Steaming weenie indeed. What became of young Lindy, the cabin boy? Fearing for his life, he came to me and begged for mercy. In return for not revealing the location of Big Whoop, I let him live. As a sign of me gratitude, I gave him a fortune which he used to build a successful advertising firm. Once he had grown accustomed to his wealthy lifestyle, I returned to collect me debt. I delivered to him an account so demonically ill-conceived that it was doomed to fail. Gangrene and honey. 
Within a month, he was penniless and insane, a broken man. He sold everything he owned and got so desperate, he fell in with a traveling circus. He was killed when he was shot from a cannon without a helmet. No one could be that desperate. What fate befell Captain Marley? I ambushed him while he was racing in the America's Cup. I boarded his ship and decided to let him determine his own fate. He could grant me his blessing to have his granddaughter's hand in marriage, or he could suffer a death more horrible than any of his crewmates. Well, what'd he say? Actually, he said quite a few things. Oh, the pain. Stop it, you're killing me. Some other things, I forget them all. I left him for dead and sent his ship into a whirlpool not even the most accomplished captain could escape. You're unbelievably ghastly and wretched. Ooh, thanks. <laughs> Does two love me? Does not. Does two infinity? Does... Uh, Curse you and your diabolical debate skills. I've heard enough of your evil stories. Let's get this over with. But there'll be so many more horrible things I'd be wanting to tell you. I'm not listening to you anymore. See, I'm ignoring you. Ah, you'd better listen. Did somebody say something? I didn't hear anything. Very well, Freepwood. If you're going to act like a child, I'll help you get in the mood. I think you deserve a timeout, young man. Yeep. It's the solid steel six inch thick door to this insidious cage. Haha! <laughs> it's not locked! Your plan was flawless, LeChuck, except for one minor detail. That will be your downfall. He's taking Elaine on his roller coaster of death. I've got to read her before she becomes his undead bride. What's happened to me? Dead. Foggy, can't think. I'm swimming. Must concentrate and rescue Elaine. I've got to save Elaine. How can I save Elaine when I'm just a little boy? If only I could think straight. Must clear my mind. <laughs> Welcome to the Big Whoop Carnival, little guy. Come on over here and meet your old pal, Dingy Dog. Oh, for crying out loud. It says Hall of Oddities. It says Trixie, the giraffe-necked girl. It says Frozen Bigfoot. It says Rides. It's a huge stack of meringue pies. It's Murray. Yo, Murray. Hey, it's you. Are you dead yet? You look different. Not dead, Murray. Just cursed. Cursed? That's perfect. I'm cursed, too. Let's join our cursed forces together, and together we can rule the world. <laughs> yeah. Let me get back to you on that. Well, I like the guy, but this is getting ridiculous. Good old-fashioned sturdy carnival scale. <laughs> That's not a toy, little boy. It says, guess your age and weight. Yikes. He looks a lot less cute and a lot more huge and terrifying in person. Are you the real dingy dog? 
<laughs> you bet I am. And I'm here to make sure you have fun, fun, fun. What's your name, little boy? Okay, for starters, I'm not a little boy. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. Well, shiver me timbers, that's well. Don't you patronize me. Well, <laughs> sounds like you've learned a very big word. You're a very bright little man. <laughs> That's well. <laughs> Laugh while you can. Soon I'll destroy LeChuck and your entire world will lie in ruin. You bet. Roll along and play now, son. <laughs> I'd like to speak to your manager. Oh, no, you don't, little boy. <laughs> Just the sight of my manager has caused children older than you to burst into tears. I really want to talk to somebody in charge. No can do, son. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Monkey Mountain Roller Coaster. That's where LeChuck was taking Elaine. Got to get in there. Mm, no. Nope. <laughs> that ride's just for bigger kids. I need to get on the roller coaster. I'll bet you do. <laughs> it's fun. But that ride's only for bigger kids. I don't care if it's not safe. I have to ride it now. Oh, no, 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 son. <laughs> it's not that it's not safe for little kids to ride. It's just that you've got to be much, much older to really appreciate the sheer mind-numbing terror of the coaster. <laughs> but wait a few years and... You'll have matured enough to ride. You'll also be able to buy candy and eat it whenever and wherever you want. <laughs> Just like us grown-ups can. Let me on the roller coaster. Uh, nope. <laughs> that ride's only for bigger kids. How can I win one of these fabulous prizes? Well, that's easy, <laughs> matey. If I can't guess your weight or your age, you get to pick what you want. What's the catch? <laughs> There's no catch. It's just that easy. Just try to guess how much I weigh. All righty. <laughs> let Dingy have a look at you, little guy. Uh, let me see here. I figure a strapping little pirate like you must weigh... 98 pounds. Ha! The joke's on you. I just look like a little boy. In actuality, I'm a mighty pirate weighing in at... 98 pounds. This is really embarrassing. Am I not eating right? I've been working out. I'll bet you can't guess how old I am. <laughs> Bet you I can. A little fearsome buccaneer like yourself must be seven years old. Ha! Wrong. I just so happen to be 20. <laughs> well, do you have any proof for your old pal Dingy Dog? You calling me a liar? <laughs> you bet I am. <laughs> I have my proof right here. Scum Actors Guild membership card. Guybrush Threepwood, age 20? I suppose you're right. <laughs> Pick your prize. One smuggle bunny, please. <laughs> well, what do you know? Seems like your buddy Dingy Dog forgot to mention something. <laughs> I see. Typical. I suppose you're telling me that's one of your prestige prizes now. You bet I am. <laughs> Would you like to play again? Uh, okay. <laughs> All righty. I would guess that you are 20 years old and that you weigh 98 pounds. 
Now, wait a second. That's not fair. <laughs> yeah, neither is life, son. You learned a valuable lesson today, and that's the best prize of all. <laughs> Choose again. I really want that talking skull. <laughs> With my unfettered demonic might, we will rule the world! Mm, you're right, Murray. If I had all that power, the temptation for evil would be too great. I'll take the anchor. Well, take it away, son. Congratulations. <laughs> Enjoy your stay here at Big Whoop. Look into your heart. I'm the prize you really want. This anchor looks good, heavy, and useful. Free me, my brother, and together we can rain terror across the land. Come on, pick me. What? You picked the anchor? Well, it's a really nice anchor, Murray. Sorry. I can't believe you picked that stupid anchor instead of me. Hey, what do you think you're doing? I just want one of those pies. Yeah? Well, I just want out of this stinking rat head. Life's tough, kid. Cope. What good is a dumb hunk of iron anyway? This anchor looks good, heavy, and useful. It's not even a real anchor. I'm a real talking skull. Murray? I'm not speaking to you. How could you pick that anchor over your best friend? After all we've been through together. Cute. A grotesquely enormous smelly rat. You. Yeah, kid, what is it? Yikes, what is that horrible smell? It's a giant rat suit, you little brat. What did you expect, roses? Am I the only one nauseated by that terrible stench? Okay, okay, the suit smells. We've heard it. Everybody just come over and pick on the giant rat man. What are you guys doing here? It's blow the man down, the most fun in the midway. Hit the funny clown and win a fantastic prize. Watch the pies fly from the cannon with blinding speed and loud report. And if your aim is true, go home with your winnings. Join in the laughs with your happy sailor host, Warfrat, and his pal, Monty Meringue. What flavor? What? What flavor are the pies today? I don't know. Lemon meringue, I think. What kind of a stupid question is that? What in the world is meringue? I don't know, kid. Whipped egg whites, I guess. I want to shoot the cannon. I want to shoot the cannon. Sorry, little boy. You're too young. Blow the man down is for older kids. That's discrimination. How do I know it really works if I can't see it go off? Okay, kid, you want to see the cannon fire? Here we go. Fire the cannon again. I already showed it to you. Do it again, do it again. All right, kid, just one more time. Never mind. Fuck! It's a pie pan. You would have made a lousy undead monster anyway. Yeah, kid? And what do you expect me to do with that? Nothing. Never mind. Hey! What are you doing over there? I found this pie tin. Oh! Happy day! We're saved! <laughs> I was just offering. We don't need it, kid. Get lost! I'm going to wait for an owner who understands my need to bring fear and pestilence on the likes of you! He's so cute! Get out of here before I call up the demonic legions of Hades and set them upon you like a swarm of angry locusts! Maybe later. If you value your life, mere mortal, you will flee before Murray, scourge of the living, and uber skull of the underworld! I can't do that from here.
Maybe later. What's Dingy Dog really like in person? What are you asking me for? I'm just a giant rat. I'm not allowed to associate with His Highness, the great and mighty Dingy Dog. Could you uh, introduce me to Dingy Dog? No, I can't. Now go away. Dingy Dog's really cool, huh? Oh yeah, he's a regular saint. So much more gifted a performer than any common old giant rat. Give a guy a big dog suit and he turns into a, a freaking prima donna. I bet Dingy Dog gets paid a lot of money, right? Yeah, and so what if he does? It doesn't take any talent to make a big puppy dog appealing. Now, getting children to hang around a giant rat, <laughs> that's odd. I bet his suit doesn't stink either. You know, you're really starting to bug me, kid. I bet Dingy Dog could beat you up. Could not. I bet he could. I'll tell you what, kid. Why don't you go take a swipe at him and then come back here and tell me what happened, huh? Never mind. <laughs> now that's not very nice, little boy. Come on, now stop hitting your pal Dingy Dog. I'm not gonna warn you again, kid. <laughs> you better cut that out. Yeah, you're really starting to bug me, kid. All right, <laughs> that does it. You're going down, little punk. <laughs> Ow, he bit me. Hey, give me back that hair, kid. You're ruining the suit. It looks an awful lot like genuine dog hair. The hair is useless here. It says snow cones. What kind of snow cones do you have? <laughs> what kind of cones did you ask? Why, I have every kind imaginable. I have the most distinct type of snow cones in the world. In fact, my cones are so original, so inventive, and so <laughs> unique that most are completely inedible. Let me list some for you. I have sweet cones, meat cones, cold cones, mold cones, bold cones with lime, cones with slime, <laughs> veggie cones, wedgie cones, hedgy cones. I used some of my neighbor's edge in that one. Cones with spice, cones with lice, berry cones, hairy cones, dairy cones, and the Christmas, oh, 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 merry cones. So, what do you think of that? Hmm. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <laughs> Bye now. Oops, my snow cone melted. It's all that's left of my snow cone. afraid of mimes. I have to wonder if he's genuinely content with this line of work. He's a mime. He doesn't talk. Mm, no. Am 
Time's gray! It's the cannon they use to launch pies at the clown. Now it's a heavy pie pan. What can I do with a heavy pie pan? Boomy. Now I've got a heavy pie pan full of shaving cream. What are you doing over there? I found this pie, mister. Huh? Oh yeah, thanks, kid. Shoot it, shoot it. Not right now. Oh, but I want to see the cannon fire. Beat cheeks, half pint. Look, man, I pay your salary. You want me to tell the Chuck you've got unhappy kids running around here? Okay, okay, you little... <laughs> Did you just hear something? No. Weird. Maybe it's the acoustics of that smelly giant head. Shut up, kid! Yoo-hoo, stinky Mr. Rat. Hey, get out of there, you little punk. What are you gonna do about it, vermin boy? This'll teach you. It's a bunch of bits of meringue from the pie. I don't wanna eat this on its own. I don't need any more abuse. Sucking on a soggy paper cone isn't half as satisfying as eating a snow cone. Take that old snow cone for you. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. <laughs> Bye now. It's a plain snow cone. Ugh, hairy. It's a disgusting snow cone topped with synthetic hair from a dog that bit me. And boy, does it look good. What an incredible taste I've discovered. <clears throat> I'll take that old snow cone for you. <laughs> Thanks. I'd like a plain snow cone, please. Okay, kid. Bye now. It's a big pepper mill. It's a big pepper mill. Nah. Well, I don't want to waste it. Mmm, peppery goodness. That meringue looks tasty. Ooh, hairy. It's a disgusting snow cone topped with synthetic hair from a dog that bit me. Fluffy whipped egg whites. And fresh ground pepper. Ooh. Ooh. The pepper helps though. me to get out. Where are they? It's a 
replica of the torture chamber in LeChuck's palace from back in the zombie days. Well, I'm glad to see that I'm featured among the attractions here. It's a Dynamo Monk Electric Wally. Hey, Gad, he looks so lifelike. Hey, wait a minute. He really is Wally. You can count on me, Wally. Just as soon as I defeat LeChuck, save a lane, set all the monkeys free, and ride the madly rotating buccaneer, I'll come back and release you. I missed that car. It's very lifelike. I mean, death-like. It's every sailor's worst nightmare, the giant snowy ape. It's the enormous Dynamo Monk Electric arm of the giant Dynamo Monk Electric Snow Monkey. Missed that car. Delay! Ah, Fleetwood is only you. Have you seen Elaine? She told me she was just going to powder her nose, and I haven't seen her since. I can't even believe that I fell for that one again. Now stand still, boy, so I can flame Broy. <laughs> It's a diorama depicting Monkey Island as it appeared when I first arrived there. I had a feeling he'd turn up sooner or later. It's a mechanical Herman Tooth Rock. This one doesn't talk. Thank you, technology. It's the rotting captain of Herman Tooth Rot's ship. It's a sturdy piece of rope. Why haven't you been boiled in me molten pool of lava? Hmm. Elaine must have fiddled with me controls and rerouted the tracks. I she'll be the death of me yet. I mean, again. <laughs> but curse as if I can't help but love the little woman. Eat flame and death, great word. Let's see the little bugaboo run. Will you be my... Hey, that's not very nice. <laughs> oh. It's a diorama of the four pirates who had the pieces of the map to Big Whoop. It's Rap Scallion, the forgetful Weenie Hut restaurateur. It's the cabin boy, young Lindy. It's Captain Marley, Elaine's grandfather. It's Rum Rogers Sr. as he appeared in life. It's a great big keg of rum. No thanks, I'm on duty. Nah. Oh no, it's LeChuck! Aye, Freakwood. It be me, your worst nightmare. 
You'll be sorry you ever set foot here on Monkey Island when I'm through with you. You're going to regret. Uh, Gesundheit? Bad move, Fleetwood. Oh. Wow. I feel so bad about leaving you to blow up in LeChuck's castle last time. I swear I'll be back to rescue you this time. Trust me. I'll be chasing you around this roller coaster till you be my undead slave, Freakwood. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's a great big kegarum. It's perfect right where it is. It's a sturdy piece of rope. It's one of those inflammable dynamo monk electric ropes. And it'd make a lousy fuse. Could you please stop that annoying swinging? It's a rustic lantern. It's a flask of burning lamp oil. Ouch! That's really hot. It's a flask of lamp oil. As soon as I defeat LeChuck, I'll come back and set you free. Soaked in oil and probably highly flammable. Cool. She's all set to pop. It's a piece of rope soaked in lamp oil. It's a copy of Piracy, Villa Chuck Wang.
Run, mortal! But do not forget your arch nemesis, Murray! Mark my words, I shall return to haunt you! Do you hear me? I shall return! <laughs> This is so unfair. Carnival is great, Dad. It sure is, son. But you know, rumor has it that the man who built this place is buried here. And they say that to this day, his frozen body remains in the tunnels somewhere beneath the amusement park. 